This is Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have waiting for you there. They're all totally free. We're here live on this Black Friday edition of Free Talk Live with you in the studio tonight. You've got Ian here. Rich Paul. And Danica. Hey, uh, so we'll talk to you about anything that happens to be on your mind. I imagine uh, some people out there in the listening audience may have had an experience with Black Friday. It's one of my most favorite topics to talk about in this time of year, simply because there's just there's so much spectacle uh, to it. And, uh, you know, every year there's inevitably some kind of crazy video uh, of people acting really dumb <laughs> and violent over products that really, I mean, okay, you get a slight discount on a television set. I guess that's a good thing, but is it worth having your head bashed against the pavement? Um, probably yeah, not. Probably not. And I found out the other day that many times retailers will um, make specific TVs for Black Friday sales that are cheaper and therefore will more than likely break e faster really? than a, re a typical TV would. So yeah. that's why that 35, 36-inch TV that's $100 is probably not going to be worth it after mm. three months. Well, all value comes down to uh, something that's subjective. It depends sure. on who the observer is. It's marginal. It depends on how much you have. And quite often when people sneer at each other's purchase decisions, what's going on is that you have people who are coming from a context of having a lot more or a lot less than that person. Mm -hmm. And you can't see how in your value system one thing is worth another. But of course, all value is marginal. It depends on how many dollars you have. If you have an awful lot of dollars, maybe you want to drop a $10,000 check on the New Hampshire Jury Association. And I'm down with that. I think that would be a great thing to do with it. But if you're just scraping by, you're not going to do that because value is marginal. Sure, absolutely. And you know, if you want if you are okay with getting a cheap TV, then, you know, maybe you'll luck out and it will last a little bit longer. Well, but... I'd like to know more about that. I mean, it was the sure. first time I've heard that. It's it's it wouldn't surprise me if that, that were true. Um, you know, normally the idea behind these Black Friday sales is that they discount regular items. I mean, the items they regularly have in the store uh, are discounted to a point where it's a loss leader, which gets people to come through the doors. Uh, and then hopefully the store's hoping that they'll also load up their shopping cart with some non-Black Friday items in order to make up the difference or at the very least gain that customer loyalty in the future to where they'll keep coming back and uh, and shopping there. But if it turns out, and I'd be interested to know, you know, which brands are doing that and which stores are doing that. If it turns out they're selling people cheaper products than they normally would, like build where the build quality has suffered, mm -hmm. and then representing that as though mm -hmm. it's a product that would normally sit on their shelves, that seems to be, I wouldn't yeah. call it dishonest, but I'd call it shady. Well, certainly, if if they were using the same model numbers. That would be a real that problem. Would be, That'd be fraud. That Absolutely. would be a, a real Definitely. problem because, you know, you pretty much if you have a high incidence of failures, uh, you really need to put that out as a factory second. And you shouldn't go substituting factory seconds for mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's what you're cheaper manufactured usually what electronics companies do is like all the different speeds of processors are manufactured to be the same. And to be the fastest possible prosecute, processor, then they take these parts and they test them to failure, uh, and the top speed at which it doesn't fail is the speed that gets stomped on it, stamped on it with some uh, margin for error. They probably round down. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong, but typically if the TV has a name on it, such as like Samsung, Toshiba, it's more than likely going to be obviously a superior product than an off-brand or a brand that you may not recognize. So mm -hmm. it's, it's probably yeah. best in most now, circumstances. Now, if they were manufacturing it as a separate brand and just buying a from a cheaper manufacturer to offer really cheap deals, 
then that's then that's a different matter. Or if they're using of course, yes. Yeah. So if numbers. it's if it's Toshiba marketing something else, then and and they're they mm. own that company, then absolutely. But if it's op brands that you've never heard of them, you can't find them anywhere else. Mm. You know, you may be crossing into a very cheap TV territory. Well, and that's it's what just, I'm con- that's yeah. what I'm concerned about is you know the allegation that you've made here. You said you heard that they are you know replacing. Uh, or that they're selling products that are of a lower build quality. I'd be shocked if name brands were doing that. If if Sony and Samsung were mm-hmm. letting product out that they knew was designed to fail or was not as good quality as they normally would represent, that would be disturbing to me. It wouldn't be you know illegal or anything mm-hmm. wrong necessarily, but you know they would be undermining their own brand uh, by doing that. But if it's some yeah, sort and of right. as a matter of fact, there's. Uh, Mo- many of the off brands of electronics are actually factory seconds from the big manufacturers and things didn't turn out quite right or the product wasn't as good or it was a cheaper making product so they would put another name on it specifically because they it's don't want to damage standards. their brand right right um and that's so they don't want even if they sold it saying, hey, this is a bad TV that we manufactured, we're selling it for scrap, they don't want it to go out with their name on it because once it's out there, what it is is it's a bad TV with their name on it, and they don't want that. Sometimes what you'll encounter in the electronics world, at least, is um, a manufacturer of a name, a name brand manufacturer will actually manufacture private label brands as well, so like Radio Shack. If you were, I mean, they barely exist anymore, but the, there still are some Radio Shacks out there. So if you were to go in and buy a Radio Shack branded scanner and you open it up, you'll actually find Uniden parts in uh, in those scanners. They're actually manufactured by mainstream, you know, big name companies, but then Radio Shack pays, you know, to have their label placed on top of it, even mm-hmm. though the guts are the same internals. So I would be interested in learning more about, you know, who's uh, who is alleged to have been uh, cutting the corners on on those TV sets. I've not heard of any big names such as Sony or Samsung. Yeah. Uh, it's typically, yeah, like I said, it's just typically off brands that you probably have not heard of or it just well, I don't expect quality secondhand. from off brands anyway. Mm, right? No, I mean, uh-uh. So, I mean, if it well, turns out unless I even... can Google it, and maybe an exactly. off brand is that's a why new it... brand yeah. that is high quality. But of course, until you Google it, you don't, you know. don't know. Yeah, and it's just very important you know, to always do comparisons, things. You know, if, if if this brand is a much better deal than the other one, of course. And yeah, you know, the saying always goes, "You get what you pay for." That much is true. The toll free number here tonight is eight fifty five four fifty free. The fights that I've found so far, the conflicts over products at the Black Friday sales throughout the United States, it actually turns out that the worst. That I've seen are not from the United States. The United Kingdom apparently also has oh, yeah. these Black Friday sales. I didn't realize. I didn't know it was like an outside of the U.S. phenomenon too. This I didn't is- realize it caught on in the U.K. as much as the U.S. But I was also reading articles and was just shocked to hear about it. I have yet to see an only in America ne- meme that co- was not verifiably false. Everything they do here, they do somewhere else. So there's one video that's at the top of the Drudge Report right now. This is probably the worst, uh, one of the worst of, that I've seen are two girls fighting over some panties. <laughs> it appears to be happening. Did you see this one? No. It appears to be happening at some sort of a Victoria's Secret-like place. There's oh nothing really that gosh. you can make from the audio. It's just, I mean, there's literally punches being thrown. Cat yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's multiple girls sort of involved trying to pull each other off, pull the two fighters off of one another. Uh, some men get involved to try to break things up, and this is a pretty serious scrap over what apparently was a you know pair of panties. But was it really Victoria's over Secret. the panties? Was it over the panties, or was it over? some slight that one did to the other in pursuit of the... I mean, the panties were probably not the prize because I would guess the panties were destroyed in the conflict and that the conflict continued after their destruction. That's, that's That's just a guess. But, you know, people, when they get into tight spaces anywhere at sports arenas at rock concerts they piss each other off and they get in fights we're gonna come back with more here in moments it's free talk live black friday version 
Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country, with a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers. How can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can't do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, walk I'm with comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. Excuse hey, me. hey, hey, hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this no, I have work today. This is you ain't gonna make. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Holy oh, crap! Yeah, oh. Hey! Oh my God! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. no. That's the sound of men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nesquik. Try Nesquik 4-Packs, perfect for lunches and great for kids on the go. Look for it in the juice aisle. Snack time is a great chance to sneak extra calcium into your child's diet without making him feel like he's eating something he doesn't want. Serve up dairy-rich foods like smoothies, flavored milk, frozen yogurt, and string cheese. He'll love the treat, and you'll love knowing how good it is for him. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you're invited here to take control of the airwaves. Maybe you work in retail and you've just gotten home from a long day of Black Friday madness, and you want to tell us what you've experienced. Uh, Danica and Rich Paul joining me, Ian, here in the studio. Danica, you told me during one of the breaks you have worked in retail Oh yeah, in the past, as have I. I worked at uh, Big Kmart for a number of years. How about you, Rich Paul? Have you, uh, you ever done any retail work? I know you've done programming work, but... Um, I've worked in uh, gas stations and convenience mm-hmm. stores uh, in a college town, so... I've dealt with rowdy customers, uh, for example, after a a football win or a basketball win, 
Uh, you know, you're sometimes it was riot conditions and you're literally there, mm. you know, depend, defending the store with, you know, we used to pick up the chains that we chained the coolers shut at. Um, at at beer thirty at two a.m. and mm. and use those to try and you know because because really it's it's not a matter of defending the store it's a matter of you have no way to get out of the store so you're defending your ass because you don't know what's going to happen if the rioters get in there. Well, we know what happened in Ferguson. Uh, it was definitely destruction of property, windows being smashed, people uh, coming and grabbing stuff. Uh, the organ, the chaos at the shopping centers was certainly more controlled than Ferguson, but there was still some crazy scenes. And the Daily Mail over in the UK has some pretty amazing pictures of just people putting their hands all over each other and grabbing onto boxes. Mm -hmm. Apparently, some uh, some people were actually laying atop of boxes in an attempt. To prevent others from oh, taking them. Oh no! Are you serious? There's a picture. This there's a series of pictures on this Daily Mail story, which I'll link link to over on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. And uh, there's a series of pictures where a lady wearing black and sort of the I don't know if they're UGG boots or whatever, but uh, she's wearing black all over, and she's just she's literally riding atop of a TV. She's fully splayed out over on top of this TV as another woman is trying to drag the TV away. The other woman is literally grabbing a hold for dear life on top of this TV set. And it's just, hmm. it's crazy. And they actually do have video of that happening as well. So, I mean, she really, really wanted that uh, that Polaroid television Where, And set. this was in the UK, you said? Yes. Okay. Yes, it was. I uh, wonder how many people go out there specifically because they expect that sort of thing, or they expect to get 15 minutes of fame out of being photographed in some bizarre position. I can't imagine there would be too many people who would expect that because the fame doesn't really, it's not really noticeable. I mean, there's no, yeah. all of the Black Friday fights that have ever happened, who knows who those people are? I mean, there's no. Yeah, pretty rarely they're identified. I mean, if if you're yeah. in the town in which this happened, then you might recognize sure, the person yeah. who was involved. But as far as collecting any fame outside of you know the neighborhood, I don't think that's very likely here. Yeah, I guess none of them have really gone viral yet. And none of the Black Friday videos or the people. None involved. of the Black Friday videos. I would say they have. I um, would say every year these things go viral. Yeah, I mean, every get... year there's a story of a woman, you know, two women pulling, you know, dragging and fighting over a TV or just crowds, massive mm -hmm. waves of people coming in and no one can get around anywhere because they're just literally stuck. Uh, just crazy stories. Like they seem to get just even crazier year after year. Yeah, these videos definitely go viral, but that doesn't mean that the participants in them are noteworthy or memorable or even identifiable in a lot of cases, especially if you're dealing with a cell phone video that's sort of taken from a few feet away and you can see that there are two people scuffling, but you know, you can't really see their faces. So, you know, mm. they're just anonymous parts of the crowd. We've got Rich, he's in Montana. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Rich. I mean, I don't know how old you guys are, but you, you need to ask your parents if, if it was ever like this in this country. I mean, if this isn't a sign of how far Western civilization has fallen, I don't know what it is. All it is is a bunch of people buying a bunch of foreign-made junk, going in debt for it. it it's, it, I mean, I, I, I used to laugh at these videos, too, but I actually think it's sad to it see this sad. stuff now. No, I agree with you. It's sad. But wait, are you saying that there were, first of all, I don't know if Black Friday was as big of a thing 20 or 30 years ago as it is today. Was it? No, when I, when I was growing up, I mean, uh, people were civilized. People are like animals anymore. I mean... What has changed, you in your opinion? I mean, people are st people are animals 30 years ago, but maybe no, there just no, wasn't no, as no, much no, cell phone no, no, video. It was, believe me, Ian, it was never like... How old are you, Ian? I'm in my 30s. You're in your 30s. Well, yeah. you you don't you don't remember the days I remember. I'm twice old, twice as old as you are. I mean, people were in no way like they are today. I mean, this is just a perfect example of of where where this country, Western civilization in general, is going. This is why it's all going down. I mean, it's got to go down eventually. Okay, so I, mean, I can understand to some extent where you're coming from. There's certainly an argument to be made 
that uh, consumerism is bigger than it's ever been in the United States. The idea that people seek satisfaction through buying stuff. And, of course, that never really does satisfy because there's always some new thing uh, that, uh, you know, you want to get after you get whatever it was that you were looking to get. And so there's this endless sort of cycle of people buying things that arguably maybe they don't really need, but, you know, they got the disposable income or and or like you're saying, they go into debt for it, making their lives that much more difficult because they really have to have a 50 inch TV. I can I can definitely appreciate some of that critique, but that's I don't know. I mean, Rich Paul, you're probably the oldest guy at the table here. Are you in your Mm -hmm. late 30s or early 40s now? I'm uh, 45. 40, I'm going to be 46 in a few days. Sorry, Rich the Caller. We have a different Rich in the studio, so I was just oh, okay. letting you know that we have a range of ages uh, in the studio here. Rich, I mean, as the uh, elder in the studio, do you think that the other Rich here in Montana is on to something? Um, I think that uh, that people are, uh, that there has been a change, that, that this sort of thing... I mean, we didn't see Black Fridays like this 20 years ago. Um, I don't remember it being this crazy when I worked in retail back in the late 1990s. And, you know, I was there for some of these Black Friday sales. And certainly it was busy, uh, but nobody really threw any punches that I saw, at least at our store. But again, different stores, yeah. different, different towns. Sure, and different and towns. really, there's no economic reason for Black Friday to be special. I mean, Black Friday is is the day at which, on average, retailers um, cross from the red into the black. That's true. But if they didn't buy the stuff that day, they'd buy it the day before or the day after. So basically, uh, in the absence of the sale, Mm -hmm. you know? So really, there's no reason to have the sale because it doesn't really matter whether you get into into the black a day earlier or a day later. That doesn't mean you make more money at the end of the year. And well, they the reason don't... to have the sale is because you need to outcompete the other people who are having sales. You couldn't just not have a sale. Right, but on why black does the Friday. first person have the sale? Well, somebody started it, and now it's become quite the trend. Yeah, and and that's the thing. I mean, if if I was a retailer, I would probably sit. Black Friday out because Black Friday is irrelevant and I would not change my prices and therefore my my employees would be safe and my uh, store would be intact and maybe I'd make a few less dollars, but I think I'd sleep better at night. Rich in Montana, if you don't mind, I'd like to bring you back here in a moment to continue this discussion uh, because I'm curious to know, you know, why... Rich feels like things are so different. I mean, he feels like people are animals now, but they weren't 30 years ago. What has changed? It's Free Talk Live. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. Now through November 30th, get three months of GoFood storable food free when you buy a one-year supply. Get six weeks free with your purchase of a six-month supply and three weeks free with your purchase of a three-month supply. GoFoods are storable for 25 years, non-GMO, kosher certified, and quick fix. Call 800-648-9753 or on the web at www.storefoodnow.com. That's www.storefoodnow.com. Free Talk Live. If anybody else wanted to know how to do it, y'all gave them the information, and plus how to get illegal drugs, how to get hand grenades, and I'm, <laughs> I mean, this is a free country, but I don't, you know, but you but, gave out web addresses, uh, Silk something. The you Silk know, Road is a revolutionary website that allows people to buy from the black market in a much safer manner than they currently buy, and I'm all about harm reduction, Bob. I think that uh, reducing oh, this harm... this is great for a free country. Let's get everybody on to safer illegal drugs. Drugs. Do you think anybody did crack oh, so that makes it, after watching so our that, show so that had never done it before? That, it, <laughs> that's part so of we, your liberty that because it's okay with a lot of people, 
people, let's make sure we have it. Let's keep advertising. No, I think radio. that it is not my right to tell you what is right or wrong to put in your body, and nor is it your business to tell me what is right or wrong to put in my body or what I'm going to do with my uterus. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Attention, have you been in a serious automobile accident? Then you need to call our attorneys now. We specialize in helping our clients get compensated for major auto injuries. If you've been in any type of car or motorcycle accident and you've been seriously injured, you may be entitled to significant financial compensation. Our attorneys have recovered millions and millions of dollars for injured clients. There are no out-of-pocket costs to you ever. We only receive a fee when we win your case. We are available 24-7. If you've been in an accident and been seriously injured, make this free call to our attorneys attorneys now. Call the Personal Injury Center at 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. That's 800-648-9173. This ad is paid for by participating member law firms. We are not an attorney referral service. Representation may not be you can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited here to take control of the airwaves on this Black Friday edition of the program. We will, of course, allow you to bring up anything that you want. We've been talking about Black Friday thus far, and I want to get back to Rich on the line here in Montana in a moment because I want him to explain why he thinks things are different now. He says that uh, people are now acting like animals in the stores, whereas he says that didn't happen you know, 30, 40 years ago. I'd love to hear his speculation as to why. We'll get into that. But also I want to let you know about the Texas Bitcoin Conference that's coming up next year, March 28th and 29th. It's going to happen in downtown Austin at the Moody Theater. It's the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference, and it's loaded up with the best and brightest speakers, the latest exhibitions in Bitcoin, and they're going to be hosting the, uh, the second two, excuse me, the second million-dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon and they've invited the entire Texas legislature along to allow them to see firsthand that not enacting complicated regulations encourages innovation and job creation. The Texas Bitcoin Conference will prove that Bitcoin is a force for good. If you're knee-deep in Bitcoin or just interested, this is the place to be, March 28th and 29th. There's also a kickoff event happening on the 27th. Plus, if you uh, would like to submit ideas, they're doing white papers call right now over at TexasBitcoinConference.com. Uh, we were there last year, by the way, and it was a great event. Looking forward to being a part of it again uh, with Free Talk Live in 2015. Again, it's March 28th and 29th. Go to TexasBitcoinConference.com to get your tickets and get details. That's TexasBitcoinConference.com. With you tonight, Ian here. Rich Paul. And Danica. Let's bring a different Rich. He's back on the line here in Montana. Rich, you say you've been around for a while. You're in your 60s. Uh, this stuff... No, not in 60s. Almost 60s. Almost 60s. Sorry about that. So late 50s. Uh, you're maybe a decade or so older than Rich Paul, who's in the studio here. And you said, Rich, in Montana, that this behavior that we're seeing on Black Friday, the the mobs of people, the fighting, the the screaming, uh, that the, that people never behaved that way in the past. Uh, what's your speculation as to? And when you say the past, I presume you mean you know so a few decades ago. So what's your speculation as to why? Well, first of all, I never said they never 
uh, but it was few, very few and far between. But in my opinion, it's, I mean, there's a total breakdown of morality in this country. There's no discipline anymore. It used to be people would act like that in public. I mean, they would be embarrassed about it. People aren't embarrassed about stuff anymore. I mean, everybody thinks they're justified in what they're doing. It's a lot of a breakdown of the family. You name it in this country. This is, I mean, society is just in the toilet. Well, you know, I used to live in populated areas where the malls and the, all the box stores and all that stuff was, and I got away from that stuff. Mm-hmm. Because well, you could see it coming down the pike. It's like a bad feeling in your stomach, which so, I've had for many years now. But Okay, but to go back to what you were saying there, Rich, you said that, uh, that it, it did happen in the past. It was just few and far between. Isn't it possible that it just wasn't being reported on in the same way that it's being reported on today? I mean, 30 years ago, nobody had a cell phone that could record video on it. So if there was some sort of a scuffle at the local Kmart then the only thing that you'd ever hear about it would be as if rumors went around. You or know? on, you know, they did have a couple of news stations on the TV. But there's no chance that the news cameras, sure, I mean, yeah. almost zero chance that the news cameras would be there to record the opening doors at 6 a.m. would be way fewer t- um, news shows for sure. You'd almost never see well, video well, of this. You, you would hear about it, but naturally back, you know, in the, in, in the 60s, uh, late mm-hmm. 50s, I mean, they didn't have things like the Internet and stuff like that. They didn't have a YouTube I mean, cell obviously, phones. look at look at people anymore on the street. And when you go out around Keene, I, I imagine it's a lot around there, around New Hampshire. So you live in a more populated area. You ever see anybody with not a cell phone stuck to their ear or glued, you know, would, would you know, well, would, are you say are you suggesting that cell phones are somehow something? indicative of the failure of society? What are you getting at there? Take it to technico- te- technological era. I mean, I'm not really a 21st century type person. So would you describe whatever yourself happens, as a, a Luddite? Days, people just showing respect for one another. And well, I don't think because someone another. has a cell phone means they're disrespectful towards people. I mean, we're talking about a minority of people here in general. It still is few and far between as far as how often these fights happen. When you go no, to the I Drudge think, Report... No, I think it's more than that. Hmm. Okay, I mean, well, look at these... Look at these fools that line up at these stores and camp out because they're going to get an extra twenty dollars off of a, a item, it, it, you know, with their Black Friday. Well, sales. economically, I mean, that doesn't ridiculous. make any sense, right? Like, if your time is valuable, then saving twenty dollars, spending ten hours to save twenty dollars is it's a crazy thing to do. But it also might be just fun, Rich. Well, Maybe they, people are just having fun. Well, yeah, they don't less. That's You're there fun? for the festivities. That's what I'm saying. Um, it's fun. It could be yeah, fun. Exactly. Sure, yeah. And, and I, I mean, think that's what's going on. And I think that exaggerates the violence also is that people think, oh, I can go out on Black Friday and have this adventure. Okay. But, you know, let, you know about 23 years ago, people were, what, were standing in line outside to watch movie premieres. Sure. People stand in line for restaurant openings. I and mean, people mm-hmm. don't just camp out for Black Friday. They camp out for, you know, the. I know back where I'm from, we didn't have Chick-fil-A. When Chick-fil-A first came out, people were camping out <laughs> like days in advance. Really? For, you know, for years, yeah. you know, for years worth of Chick-fil-A how sandwiches. how was that? When oh, did that, when did they first this, come? Yeah, when did that happen? That uh, like last year. Isn't that pathetic? Uh, it's, you know, it's what people want to do with their time. I mean, it's not something that I would do, especially not in, you know, zero degree weather. But if they, you know, feel like, hey, I want to camp out for Chick-fil-A and have a year's worth of Chick-fil-A sandwiches, by all means. Yeah, I mean, everybody's got their preferences. Rich, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate uh, your perspective. I, and I, I can appreciate some of what Rich is saying, but at the same time, you know, I don't pass judgment on somebody sure. because they go out to the Black Friday sale. I went to some Black Friday sale uh, a couple of them, actually, when I was still living in Florida. And, you know, it wasn't a bad experience at all. It was fun standing in line with people, and you kind of get to know the people that you're, you're oh, waiting yeah. there with. And if you're, I mean, I've never did camping out, but, I mean, I know that, uh, I imagine the camping out kind of thing is probably like, you know, waiting in line to go to a rock concert. Have you, have you or ever a Comic-Con or anything like right. that. I mean, there's there's tons of camping out, and, I, you know, Funny story is I remember my friend's parents telling me about how they were how they were waiting in line for the new uh, Star Wars movies. It's just you know people have been. You oh, know, that was doing a disappointment, th- I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it was actually um, a funny story about that because they back it, when the movie when those movies came out, 
people didn't have the internet to read about spoilers or anything yeah, like that. True. So uh, my friend's dad and uh, his you know then girlfriend, which became his wife, were standing in line, and his mom's sister comes running out and she's like, "Oh, oh, guess what? Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's father." And oh, no one knew no. about it, and they were so mad at her for spoiling it. <laughs> <laughs> so share your thoughts here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Dave is in California. You're on Free Talk Live, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm totally in agreement with that guy because, I mean, it's, it, uh, it's, it's it, yeah, it's totally changed. It's nothing like – I'm not – you know, we're not saying there wasn't violent people or things happening ever – and it's not to do because we didn't know about it through the there's newspapers, there's radios, there's television news. No, it's it didn't happen like that uh, like 30, uh, 30 years ago. What is your so. expertise? Did you work in retail? No, no. Expertise is being in society and being in tune and knowing that this did not go down. It's not expertise. Well, if I wasn't looking the at the front page, uh, hold on. If I wasn't looking at the front page of Drudge Report and doing Google searches for Black Friday fight, uh, you know, right. then I wouldn't know about it either. I mean, I yeah. know the word didn't get to me that there was any kind of scuffle at the Keen Walmart today or out at uh, Dick's Sporting Goods or anything like that. The you know that that word has not gotten around. So by all evidence, if I was not connected to the internet, I would have no reason to even be thinking about what happened at Black Friday. And unless I was at the store itself to experience it, it seems pretty unlikely that word would get to me if somebody pushed another person uh, while they were trying to get a hold of a television set. I mean, look, I don't think this happened 30 years ago because I don't think Black Friday as a concept was the, the same as you know what it is today. But I don't know if it's fair to say that consumers wouldn't have behaved in this manner 30 or 40 years ago. I, I, I just think that's pure speculation. I think it's very fair because I was there. Yeah, 61. And but I, you weren't working in there. retail, so you, you weren't actually no, there. No, but I was all... I, yeah, but, but, but I, I'm on, aware of Hang on, Dave. I'll bring you back things. here. You can f finish your thoughts here in a moment. 855-450 free. It's Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and, and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. 
FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com you're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. It is the live Black Friday edition of the program. Joining you in the studio tonight, you have Ian. Rich Paul. And Danica. And you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features that we share with you there. You will not find any Black Friday specials on our website, but uh, we do continue to crank out the content as we are here live every single night, even on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve. We'll be here for you, bringing you live audio content. Of course, you can download it all for free at freetalklive.com. If you feel like leaving a little something for us, you can certainly do that. There's a Bitcoin tip jar at bitcoin.freetalklive.com. Also, you can become a Free Talk Live amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. And your amp dollars, five bucks a month. Uh, your amp dollars really make a difference for Free Talk Live. It really helps us get on more radio stations across the country and spread the ideas of liberty as far and as wide as possible. Uh, another great website to visit is Freedoms Phoenix. Freedomsphoenix.com is where you can go to uncover the secrets and expose the lies. The readers there are provided detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go to Freedomsphoenix.com, sign up for their free daily dispatch. That's Freedomsphoenix.com. Dave is back in Northern California Dave, you're back on Free Talk Live. You were trying to back up Rich from Montana, who called in earlier, saying that it didn't used to be like this, like this meaning the Black Friday craziness, the animalistic no, behavior. No, yeah, yeah. It, at least in certain ways, the society went, you know, at least in general terms, I'm seeing it go downhill, where people are caring, uh, caring more about their items, and I'm not saying there wasn't people like that before. We still had a mafia. We still had this and that. I mean, people did crime, obviously, but but as far as what you call this Black Friday shopping, that was unheard of. You know, people are not trampling each other to get something, you know? I mean, literally going over a woman or a guy on the floor, you know, to, you know, not spending like a minute to clear him out of there or whatever so they can go onto their iPod or whatever. It's just like no, it wasn't like that. I mean, I, I you hear of things that happen. Like I had two Led Zeppelin tickets in my hand. Literally, they scout. I had to pay twenty dollars a piece for that. They scalped me, you know, because they were eight dollar tickets. And then what happened is in Boston, someone rushed the ticket office, and someone got they got killed there. So it did happen in certain areas, but we heard about that. Someone got killed, so they canceled. The, the concert, so I had to actually sell my tickets back. I never seen Led Zeppelin, but whatever. Hmm, I'm sorry to hear about that. Oh, that's a bummer. But but I see I see I know I've seen a bunch of tributes. But isn't bands. that a more of a isn't it more of an aspect of crowds of people and how people behave when they're in large 
groups where, you know, they could be angry, they could be frustrated, they could be tired, uh, that uh, people will behave differently when they're in a large group as opposed to how they would behave by themselves or in a small group where they're more identifiable and less part of a crowd. I mean, aren't, aren't you just sort of pointing I'm out sure that's that part this... Of it. I'm sure that's part of it. Like, meaning if you're waiting 12 hours or something and you're tired or whatever, that could add to it. Uh, but what, what you've saying, acknowledged yeah. is that there have been some dangerous events that happened in the past, yeah. just not under the same circumstances. It's because the Black Friday yeah. sale didn't exist 30 years ago. If it did, you know, if there were some sort of door busting kind of bargain sale that Woolworths advertised in the 1950s, like, hey, you got to get here at 8 a.m. or you know 6 a.m. if you want the deal, um, and you line up outside, would people have behaved in a similar manner if they knew they could get? whatever it was that, you know, the new there, color there, TV. I don't think it would be to that degree. No, I don't think it all. There was, there was still that. It's in, in the, And by the way, I feel you guys got that, whether you call it morals or not. The reason why I listen to your show, I like a lot of you. You're into free, you're not into voluntary, I, I mean, into forcing your will on someone. I That's love true. that. That's why I'm listening to the show. And so that, that concurs with a lot of us that were back then, who basically had it's a wonderful life in our soul, you know, if you if you can relate to what I'm saying. Uh, you know, the movie, for instance, some kind of, there, there was this kind of, uh, you know, I'm, I know there was criminals in this, but there was a lot of people just that had that common sense golden rule. And I know people still have that going on now. I mean, New Hampshire, at least in the free state mentality, has a lot of that in their mind, maybe in a different way, but it's basically a moral uh, attitude, not, trespassing on your neighbor, et cetera. Uh, and uh, there was a lot of that in general, you know. Um, what happened and, and to so change? I, I mean, if it's, general, if it's changed, what would, has happened to change it? Well, I don't have all the answers. I just feel like part of it's the, uh, you know, taking the commandments out, uh, you know, uh, you know, or, you know, just, you know, like everything's you know, this relative, uh, you know, moral relativity or instead of being like actually having some, you uh, things that you know are wrong, like basically hurting one another uh, without a defensive mechanism. You know, if a defensive uh, violence is okay. I understand that, but not uh, th- in this area of force. I think the fall off in, uh, and this is going to sound strange coming from somebody who is does not believe that any religions out there are true. As a matter of fact, I'm in the middle of doing my own religion. Um, but... I think the fall off in the influence of the church has also uh, made a difference. Um, you know, there isn't, you know, because it's been, it hasn't been replaced. The The unsound moral teachings of the church have not been replaced with sound moral teachings. Mm-hmm. They've been replaced with a vacuum of moral Just, teachings. They've been rejected. Nobody talks about honor anymore. Mm-hmm. Nobody talks about um you know what it is or what it's supposed to be to be a man mm-hmm. anymore. And uh so yeah, I think there has been a decline in values. And by saying that I'm not saying that values require God. I'm saying that if you're not going to adopt the code of a religion, you'd better find a code to adopt. Yeah, that's a good point. If Mark were here, and thank you, Dave, for your call tonight, uh, because I know that Mark had kind of a falling away from religion when he was a teenager, and he blames religion for some of the really poor choices that he made in his life after that, because he felt like, well, he was just rejecting the entirety of everything that the religion taught him rather than just rejecting the idea of God. He also rejected, you know, whatever level of morality that had been taught along with that. And then, you know, proceeded to get involved in dealing cocaine and ultimately was there when a murder uh, transpired during a drug deal gone bad, that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, and then ended up in prison for nine years. He felt like, had he not been indoctrinated with this religious code in the first place that he then rejected that maybe if he'd just been if he'd had a moral system that he would never have gone in that direction yeah well that's that's the thing and in my experience for example i remember when i tried marijuana and i got to know people who smoked marijuana this is a te- as a teenager um mm-hmm. i realized that what they told me in health class about marijuana wasn't true 
So then right. I said, okay, so these people are liars. What else were they lying to me about? Well, I don't know. So now I have to go out and try all the drugs <laughs> yeah. and, you know, find out which ones are really bad. And uh, kids, if you're listening, that list includes at least cocaine, heroin, and, and, and meth. What you're and, saying, those are the bad ones? And prescription drugs. Yeah, those, yeah. Are, those are lists of drugs that, you know, you definitely don't want to do. But right. I had to go out and find out for myself because I found that I had been deceived. Yep. Yeah, it's the same way with me as far as reli- religion because I was raised in a fairly religious ho- a household. And religion has a way of just shaming you in a way. You're making you feel bad for the things that you're thinking well, or that you're doing that's not necessarily true for all religions not all but no you, you but mean the more common organized religions organized religions tend to have a way of making individuals feel ashamed mm. you know not with all religions and certainly not with everyone's perspective but i remember growing up you know thinking certain ways or questioning you know why do i have to dress a certain way and you know being told oh you know you have to do that because that's the way it has to be and then growing up as I started, you know, thinking more for myself and falling away from the church, I realized, well, that's for I'll use modesty for example, you know, covering yourself up because you know you're not to deceive and you're not to lead men into thinking a certain way about your body. And then I, growing up and becoming more mature in my thinking, I was thinking, well, you know what, I shouldn't be responsible for men's thoughts. You know, men should be trained up in a way to think that you know, a woman is an individual. She's not, you know, a, she's not a piece of meat. Hmm. That, so, you know, in my experience that in my organized religion is that women were just, you know, women were always supposed to cover themselves and be modest because we're not supposed to tempt men. Tempting men is bad, but men weren't trained to, <laughs> you know, men are just animals, okay. right. right. Men Let weren't me trained to that. think of I'm... women as, you know, equal partners and individuals too, not just, you know, again, a piece of meat. Uh, l- l- let me let me challenge that. I mean, when you have when you want to have sex with somebody, do you think of that person as being a piece of meat, or do you think <laughs> of that person as being a wonderful human being with whom you want to have sex? When I want to have sex with somebody, it's not. I'm I'm not saying I think this is a bad person or Hold a low thought. person. Hold that We'll come back in a moment with more free talk live. <laughs> Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, November 28th, 2014. 
Gold is trading around $1,190, silver around $16.23, and Bitcoin's trading around $364.20. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat is presented by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. They've created a menu of food that's so good, so easy to make, you'll find yourself eating it every day, even though it has a shelf life of up to 25 years. eFoods Direct is offering 10% off to all Liberty Beat listeners. Just go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat for your savings today. In the news, a Harris County, Texas deputy constable in Houston has been charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon after firing his gun at a woman while driving through southwest Houston. Kenneth Kaplan was a deputy with Precinct 6. On November 11th, he allegedly pulled up next to a car, rolled his window down and shot at the woman inside, with investigators saying the bullets grazed the woman's head. Kaplan was off duty at the time of the incident. He was arrested and taken into custody on Wednesday. Plans by the Department of Homeland Security and the Central Intelligence Agency to delete thousands of insignificant records have information activists up in arms. The National Archives and Records Administration had proposed deleting government records that lack administrative, legal, research, or other value. That would include records from the Department of Defense and Department of Justice, the CIA, and DHS. Some of the DHS records include files on the Einstein 3 network monitoring system, which contains a wealth of information, including metadata such as email and IP addresses. On Wednesday, seven United Nations human rights experts called on President Obama not to yield to pressure from the CIA to redact portions of the Senate Intelligence Committee report on CIA torture. The experts released an open letter to Obama stating that his decision will have far-reaching consequences for victims of human rights violations everywhere and for the credibility of the United States. The Liberty Beat, sponsored by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Consideration for the Liberty Beat comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, November 28, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. Trappers in Saskatchewan, Canada recently established a roadblock to keep oil companies from operating on their land. The Dean people of Dakarmi are Aboriginal First Nations in northern Canada and have a long history of trapping for a living. They say that way of life is now being interrupted by security gates and operations for mineral and oil exploration. Bobby Montgrand said the province's let it burn forest fire policy has also decimated wildlife and destroyed cabins, making it increasingly difficult to make a living in a culturally sustainable way. The police chief of the Houston, Texas Police Department has said he plans to put body cameras on all uniformed officers within one year. The cameras have already been worn by 100 HPD officers as part of a pilot program. Mayor Anise Parker has stated she supports the plan, but finding the funds will be an issue. Chief Charles McClellan says he believes they can put cameras on all 5,400 officers for around $7 million. The Liberty Beat is made possible by the support of Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? Well, the Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more details, just visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, November 28th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Did you know? The 35% of high school girls report that they've only had sex with one or two partners a year instead of having the living shit f out of them by any guy they see. Did you know? 
that only half of all 17-year-old males report f***ing without a condom, even though it's really the only way to go. There are thousands of American teenagers today who are unaware of the full benefits of f***ing your brains out all day, every day. These otherwise average high schoolers haven't been taught about f***ing every chance you get, pounding each other dry and never ever pulling out. Every sexually active high school student should know this stuff. Ditch the condoms, because it's always better raw. Stop worrying about STDs. F*** every chance you get. Just keep f***ing and f***ing and f***ing. Strangers, doesn't matter who. And most importantly, be direct with your partner about how badly you want to f*** their brains out. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free and bring up whatever's on your mind. Were you out and about this morning, bright and early, for the Black Friday madness? What did you experience? Maybe you were a customer, or maybe you're working behind the retail counter, behind the register on the shopping, uh, the sales floor, and uh, you want to regale us with your experience. You're certainly welcome to join us here. Uh, the Us in Studio tonight includes me, Ian. Rich Paul. And Danica. And, of course, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And don't forget, you can join us on Skype as well. Skype username here is lrn.fm. We've got more on Black Friday coming up here in moments. Uh, NBC News reporting that things are a little bit better in the United States than they are overseas, according to NBC. So we'll uh, give you a little bit more information about that. But first, let's go to Trey. He is on the line via Skype in Oregon. Trey, you're on Free Talk Live. Evening, folks. Hey so uh, um, as far as the uh, religious viewpoint and the falling away of religion, I'm, I'm not so sure that that has... I mean, yeah, yeah the, the, there is a void there because I think a lot of people have kind of gone away from those traditional um, uh, religious views and whatnot. And so there aren't, you know, ethical uh, uh, foundations that are, that are replacing those. But on the other hand, I grew up a Christian. I grew up an evangelical Christian. I um, went to Christian high school. Um, it was one of those name it, tam- uh, name it, claim it type of places. And I know firsthand that especially Western evangelical Christians, um, and not just Western, but also Eastern. I mean, it happens, it happens in South Korea, and it ha- happens in Africa, too. Uh, they can be super, super materialistic, though they won't refer to it as being materialistic. Rather, they'll put it under the guise of uh, blessings from God, even um, if, it puts, if it's something that puts them in debt. I've heard people say uh, they, that you know, they, got a, um, they were blessed because they got a car loan, um, that you know they couldn't necessarily afford, uh, and but yet still because they got the car, it was still a blessing from mm-hmm. God. Am, am, I, am I making sense? Well, okay. Part of the theory, it wasn't really so much that I th- that I thought that people were less materialistic then. I think people were actually more comfortable with being materialistic then, sure. because you know we were closer to the idea that it is by material things that man survives. And we seem to be forgetting that now. But, you know, you, the reason we pur- pursue material goods is material goods keep us alive. But the main thing for me is think of the difference in behavior w- from your average cop when you put a video camera on him. He's going to act differently because somebody's watching. Well, what if you think that you've got a, a ghost following you, ar- you around <laughs> and watching everything that you do? Is that going to change your behavior, even if it's not true? I would say, it, sure. you know, in a lot of cases it would. People would think, oh, you know, mm-hmm. God is is watching me. I, watching God, I have no idea you. when and where they jerked off because <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, they yeah, still I, managed. I, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I guess they figured God would be a gentleman, but um. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Trey. Now, I, I, no, I agree with you uh, um, on those points, uh, um, Richard. I, I, I'm just saying that coming from, you know, coming from that background and everything, you know, there's balance, and I think you would agree that, you know, there, there is, there is definitely balance, and, and the, the, I think I feel like the problem, the problem with like, you know, the folk that have that have fallen away. Uh, like myself, um, you know, there was a time when I kind of lost my ethical, you know, my um, not not my moral center, but I mean, I went a little nuts, 
you know, for, for a while after, after I kind of left the church. But I'm, I'm kind of back to a point now to where um, I, I'm decided I want to live a life that isn't so uh, materialistic and not that consumerism is a bad thing at all. You know, I think we can all agree it's not, but it, it's to the point whenever you're out there fighting for things that are, you know, absolutely meaningless and you're willing to hurt somebody to get them. And in, in that respect, you're absolutely right. There is no moral center there that's guiding people, uh, you know, in that direction, as opposed to should be guiding them in the other direction as far as, you know, I'm not going to actively seek to hurt somebody for a, you know, a flat screen TV that's 30% off. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense relative to, you know, proper, you know, uh, ethics, I suppose. Yeah. One of the nice things about being libertarian is I actually have something to substitute for that God's watching me thing, which is non-initiation of force. And if I go through my life and I never, ever okay. initiate force, then most of the time I'm going to be OK. Obviously, there, there are other things you have to do and refrain from doing to be considered a decent human being. But, you know, if you don't initiate force, you've got a pretty good code. It's a good start. That's for sure. Absolutely. Trey, uh, yeah. any other thoughts you want to share tonight? You know, just one quick thing. Actually, you mentioned uh, you know standing in line, uh, you know, for movies earlier as 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 kind of a comparison to what people do outside of stores. Yes. And I I know you I'm sure you guys have seen the teaser trailer for the new Star Wars film. Oh yeah, I did seven. see that. Yeah. Yeah, and and I posted today on Facebook. I said, you know, uh, up, up here in Portland, it doesn't get nearly as cold as as it does in New Hampshire, of course, but. You know, it's super rainy throughout the winter, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, it being released on December 18th of next year, my first thought was, man, I hope the weather's decent, you know, the one to seven days leading up to uh, to the release of the movie, you know, because I really want good theater camping oh, weather. Oh, people You're have space see. heaters and any other kind of warm. You're planning on yeah. camping out, though, is what you're saying, for Star Wars? I, I, yeah, I think so. I didn't do it for the um, for the prequels just because I was younger and whatnot. My, um, yeah, I, w I was still in... I was just out of high school when the first one, when the first one, when uh, first prequel came out, and I think, and and um, I just, I just didn't think to, but, but uh, I did for the second and third Lord of the Rings movie, and I, I, I'm going to for these, just because I'm in a very geeky town. It's going to be a great time here in Portland for for, the, for that sort of thing. And it's, no, that's why you do it, right? Me. Like, just that right. goes back to a conversation we were having earlier, where one of our our first caller of the night was like, "What's wrong with these people for for camping out?" And while it's not the way I would choose to spend my time just because I've got so much happening, um, I can't imagine I would take time off to do something like that. But I understand the motivation. It's fun, right? Like you're in line with Absolutely. a bunch of characters. There's people there in costume. Oh, and yeah. They're very silly. And, you know, it's, what was your experience like? I mean, the, the Lord of the Rings camp out. How, how many days was it that you were out there? What was what was the experience? Um, there were people who were out there for um for you know four or five days but I, I i did it this the second one it was uh it was two days and the third one it was um just over 24 hours i believe uh, that i was out there with some friends i ended up meeting some people uh it was fun you're, you're exactly right people were in costume uh people people were you know passing around you know we had flasks and stuff like that uh being, <laughs> And, you know, so it, it's a it's a great time. It's, you know, not the, you know, uh, kind of be, you know, nail on a head ish right here. But I mean, you know, it was it was a it was companionship that you had, you know, like minded people. And uh, some right. people where are else are you going to find besides at a convention? Where else right. are you going to find yeah, that many yeah. Lord of the Rings fans all in the same place? <laughs> I mean, I've exactly. camped out for exactly. I've camped out for Lord of the Rings. I even made costumes for it, so wow. I can totally you know, get the you know you go there just like oh these are my people. We can start speaking Elvish, and it's going to be totally cool. And I don't care what people <laughs> say because I'm having fun. These. Right. Uh, this concept also played into my uh, to my activism, the 420 rally. I mean, in order to keep people coming there, like, every day for two years, you know, it had to be fun. There had to be, I mean, if people were just going down there and, and swinging signs and not having a good time, they'd quit doing it. And so we, we had to keep keep it fun to keep them coming. Trey, so what was your, your favorite part about uh, camping out for a movie? 
Um, you know, like I said, it, I think it, my favorite part was the, well, besides the anticipation, was this being able to hang out and met a lot of new people, mm-hmm. um, friends that I still have to this day. Oh, that's neat. And, and, and that's, that's pretty much it. It's the companionship. So, I mean, people now you're probably can, not going to get that same level of connectedness from a crowd outside of the Walmart, because then oh. the only thing you have in common is you want a good deal on a TV people set. want that TV. Absolutely or a coffee right, maker yeah. or something. So, I don't think you're going to see the same thing happen. That said, uh, I think that there was uh, a friend, a couple, fr- a couple that I know. They are no longer a couple, but they were for a number of years, and they, you know, it was good for for a time. They met during a Black Friday, uh, sorry, or outside wow. of a Black Friday sale. They were literally in line together outside of. A, now it was a GameStop, awesome. so they did both have the same kind of interest of gaming, uh, I guess. But uh, you never know who you're going to meet at these things. Trey, thanks for the call tonight. Thanks. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, let's talk more about the Black Friday and consumerism coming up here in moments. He said it was a good thing. I don't know. It's Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least $10,000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800 691 6129. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on join the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. 
By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves. Just dial on in toll-free here. Give us your experience with Black Friday if you have had it, if you were out and about doing some shopping in real life uh, this morning and you want to tell us a story, feel free. Or maybe you've worked in retail or you do work in retail and you've got a story to tell, feel free to do that as well. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE and you can join us online at freetalklive.com where you can get a free pound of some of the best of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. Just go to coffee.freetalklive.com. BuzzBox coffee shade grown 100% organic and top 1% grade Arabica. It's great coffee and it's competitively priced, but they're doing something special at BuzzBox and uh, that you're just not going to find at other coffee producers. They've actually worked with Free Talk Live to help set up a program with Kiva.org to help change people's lives by offering microloans to people in poverty to give them a chance to make their own lives better. And uh, you can help help us fund these microloans by just going and getting some great coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. You pay the shipping cost, you get that first pound free, and then from that point on you'll be on their auto ship program where they will send you a certain amount that you can specify at a certain interval of time that you can also specify. So it's very customized. And it works. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Our listeners have uh, that enjoy coffee have really been enjoying BuzzBox. And for every 10 listeners uh, that comes on board, we can fund one new microloan. So go to coffee.freetalklive.com. As we continue here talking about Black Friday. Now, our caller uh, just a moment ago, Trey, he mentioned consumerism. Now, this is sort of a, a bad word, right? This uh, this idea that you know people are encouraged to buy too much, and he suggested that maybe there's nothing wrong with consumerism. And I don't know. Um, I, I kind of feel like having too much stuff is a bad thing. Like you know, the idea that you've always got to have the latest and the greatest phone or TV set or you know fill in the blank, whatever the the device is or the thing is, and I. I, uh, you know, have you ever seen those those shows like Hoarders? I was just about to suggest it t- could turn to hoarding. Oh it could. no! And to me, that's a real problem. Like that's that's a hoarding is a is a disease. It's like a mental disorder of some sort. And uh, and not only is it you know, not only is it just an ugly thing to walk into a hoarder's house and <laughs> see the mess, but it's also it's, it it also in a lot of cases can be very unsanitary as well. You know, like a hoarder. Uh, will leave food around and oh, yeah. you know that'll go bad and uh, rats will die and cats will die. I remember seeing one episode of Hoarders where they were cleaning out some old lady's house after she had died and they were pulling out corpses of cats yep. because you know she was like a crazy cat lady and if you got enough cats, I guess you don't really keep track of all of them, especially if you're crazy. Yeah. So they die amongst the <laughs> junk, and they literally were picking up petrified cats oh, that yeah. still had, you know, clumps of hair on it's the so corpses. It's so disturbing. Wow. It, it's sad. Yeah. It, it's sad and disturbing. Now, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that everybody who wants to go buy a new TV is, you know, has the same problem that a hoarder does. But I think that consumerism and i don't know if i've got a good definition so i'm going to turn to wikipedia here their their definition is it is a social and economic order and ideology that encourages the acquisition of goods and services in ever greater amounts uh so i don't know what do you guys think of consumerism bad thing well i don't know there's a uh if you look back at the 1700s there is a group of people called the uh the Luddites, and they rioted because uh, people were building automated looms and they were afraid that, and the Luddites worked as as textile workers and Mm -hmm. they were afraid they were going to be put out of a job. Sure, they saw the writing on the wall in in that case. And the reason that didn't, if you look back after, you know, 30 years after the introduction of these automatic weaving machines— you'll find that there were actually more people employed as textile workers 
um, after the creation of these machines. And the reason is the machine made made the product cheaper, and that caused people to uh, consume more of it, and people started having seven changes of clothes instead of having one or two changes of clothes mm-hmm. in their closet. And, you know, so it was is that consumerism? I don't know. I really hesitate to, to tell somebody else how much stuff they should have. I would never tell someone else how much yeah. stuff they should have. But Same I know that for here. me but. personally, I know the more stuff I have, the less comfortable I am. Like, yeah. I don't like it. I like having keeping things simple and not having a bunch of clutter. Yeah, I, think I mean, real- I've got three little plastic tubs of stuff because yeah. I've been living like a Liberty monk for the last couple of years. But yeah, it, so I don't keep too much stuff. I can definitely relate because when I moved to New Hampshire, moving from Idaho, I you know packed 27, 28 years of my life into a car and I realized just how much stuff I had and how much of it that it, would I choose to take it, whether I was going to take it into a moving truck or if I was just going to try and either give away or sell it and just pack very minimal. And it was, what did you do? Um, a lot of the bigger stuff I did end up selling or, or giving away. Um, I did literally pack as much as I could into a small car. Mm-hmm. A lot of it is still at storage back home until I can find a place for it because the place I'm living at right now is just... What kind of stuff? I mean, obviously, um, it's, if, if it's in storage, it's clearly not something you use on a regular basis. Um, Like so, movies, okay. uh, some seasonal clothes. I mean, we're, at the time that I moved, it was summer. It's now winter. And I've actually um, asked my parents who have the, who have the boxes to send me more of the winter stuff. Yep. So a lot of it was just seasonal things, things that I would only use a few times a year. Um, but it, you know, I definitely got rid of probably at least a quarter of things I use, mostly really big furniture stuff because I didn't want to pay the extra money to move it. But it was a very humbling experience, and it's definitely made me rethink a lot of what I purchase. Like I know mm. I probably don't purchase nearly as many clothes as I do because just like, you know what? I have three hoodies. I think that's that's plenty enough. I, I think it you have people people should come to a conclusion um of satisfaction within themselves just saying, Hey, I have enough stuff. I'm good for right now. I know old mm. Navy is having a fifty percent off sale, <laughs> but I really don't need another hoodie. I don't need another tank top. I just I should be satisfied. I know it's it's tough, but I, I think people just have to kind of come to a conclusion within themselves that enough is enough. Or I I know one girl that whenever she bought a new clothing item, she gave something away. So she got rid of something old and got something new. So Trey actually sent a message over uh, over Skype as a as a follow up. He says I meant that uh, mainly meant that consumerism was a good thing from the perspective of the business owner. As far as from the consumer standpoint, I believe there's nothing wrong with wanting certain luxuries, but one's desire for stuff should not put others in danger. Like, you shouldn't be willing to hurt others over mm-hmm. getting what you want, and you shouldn't be putting your family in unnecessary debt when that can be helped. So I think that that is certainly one of the real negative uh, aspects of consumerism, is the the drive to have things also leads people into delving into the world of debt and having credit card yeah. debt. And that, of course, makes people's lives very, very difficult. Um, and people aren't taught about debt in government school. So in a lot of cases, you know, they may get out of school thinking that credit cards are like free money that you don't have to pay anything towards because the minimum payment's only like 12 bucks. So why the hell not spend $1,000 this month? You only have to pay the minimum payment, they think. And, of course, they're really just digging this grave of debt the whole time. And it's yeah. lined with what? Just a, a bigger TV set? What are you getting out of it? And the more that you charge on it, the higher it your minimum payment's like, going to be. Mm-hmm. It seems like consumer economics would be a good thing to teach high schoolers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, basics. Uh, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Black Friday, consumerism. You can comment and bring up whatever you want as well. It's Free Talk Live. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and 
installation. You control what you watch when you watch it. Record your favorite shows, pause and rewind live TV, even skip the commercials. Watch local channels too. At just $19.99, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1-855-905-MYTV. 1-855-905-MYTV. Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1-855-905-MYTV. 1-855-905-MYTV. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Inclement weather prevents a liar from getting to work, and a lunchbox is mostly medication. Sources across the nation impatiently reported today that the 24-hour news cycle seemed to be taking forever, telling reporters that the continuous coverage from MSNBC, CNN, and other news sources was simply not continuous enough. Frustrated Americans demanded more panel coverage, around-the-clock bulletins, and breaking reactions from Twitter. It's like, sure, I have five channels of unending news updates constantly flooding my screen, but each one of those only has one slow-moving news sticker. Why not three or four running at triple speed? Honestly, these networks need to understand that I can't just wait around all day for minute by minute coverage. And in this week's science news, a new report finds that lake ice grows safer to venture out on with each beer consumed. In other news, the beauty industry announces a new initiative to make women self-conscious about their palms. A beautiful cinnamon bun is too good for this world, too pure. And a picky eater is 38. This is the Onion News Network. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, the live Black Friday edition of the program. Open phones as always. You don't have to talk about Black Friday and consumerism and crazy mobs and fights in the stores, though certainly that has been the thrust of the discussion thus far tonight. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. If you care about your online privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. It is a global virtual private network that allows your online data to be encrypted. That means your internet service provider will no longer know what you're doing online once you start using ProXPN. Right now, if you're not using ProXPN, your ISP is probably logging all the websites that you visit, the search terms that you enter, that's all being recorded. In some cases, could be kept as long as five years, so you want to stop that from happening. Just go and get ProXPN. Install their software. It's free. You can just go download their app for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices as well. Uh, Linux users, you can get ProXPN working. It's just a bit of a different setup process. It's actually pretty simple with Linux. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL to get started. And when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account, 
for unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can connect to, uh, the private torrenting ability, plus getting past regionally blocked websites. You can go to proxpn.com slash FTL and then use code FTL50, and that gets you 50% off the price of an annual account. And that's a heck of a deal because it breaks the price down to around $5 per month. Plus, you can save even more with Bitcoin if you pay with code FTLBTC and then pay for the annual account with Bitcoin. ProXPN.com slash FTL. You can go there and get started tonight for free. And then when you're ready to upgrade, you, by the way, get a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. You can use code FTL50 or FTLBTC at ProXPN.com slash FTL. Get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. We are talking about Black Friday, as it is called. And Rich Paul, uh, as he explained earlier tonight, Black Friday, the name came about apparently in the 1970s. We were doing a little bit of research on the time frame on this. Yes. Because people had called in to say, this wouldn't have happened 40 years ago. Well, Black Friday didn't happen 40 years ago. The These sales where just incredible bargain bin buster kind of deals are offered and the doors open at a very specific time frame. So there's likely to be a crowd of people. And then, of course, crowds of people tend to behave differently than those same people would behave if they weren't in a crowd. Uh, and you get all these aspects uh, that sort of lead into situations that are created where danger uh, can occur. Absolutely. And and I will agree that it definitely has gotten crazier over the last probably 10 years or so, because 10 years ago, nothing was open on Thanksgiving. And now you've got stores opening at you know 6, 4 p.m., mm. 8 p.m. Uh, on Thanksgiving to, to start the deals off because they're trying to get a step up above their competitors. So I will agree that it's definitely... Um, gotten crazier as it goes on. and uh, well, I don't think that has to do with the fact that it's open on Thanksgiving is why it's crazier. In fact, I had heard that it's because they're open on Thanksgiving now is why Black Friday isn't as uh, crazy. The, the Friday itself, no, but just the, you know, the, the shopping and getting started in, into it definitely has creeped up faster because 10 years ago, nothing would have been open on Thanksgiving and now things are being open on Thanksgiving. Well, I think that there is a level of competition that is in play here. Now, there are sure. some states that have uh, apparently made it illegal to open on Thanksgiving, but in other places we are seeing that happen. Although I can tell you when I was working for Kmart back in the 1990s, there was one year where they did open on Thanksgiving, and it was the best day that uh, I mean, it was the busiest day that I that I think we had all year because Even everybody else was 90s. closed. You know, everyone mm. else was closed. Kmart was the only place open, and we got swamped uh, on that particular year. So it did happen more than than ten years ago that some stores would open on Thanksgiving, but it's become a trend now. Sure, yeah. Uh, as and, a result, and Ian, can you like share a particular story of a Black Friday experience that you had, if you can remember any? Well, that was what I was saying before. Was that I don't recall anything oh. going crazy at uh, at the store that I was at. I was certainly there in the morning i was i was you know there when these things should have if there was going to be some craziness it, it should have happened i mean there was a, a fair fairly decent amount of customers outside and they came in but they were relatively orderly and in fact on the facebook page for free talk live i had posted the question kind of one of the things we were talking about in the last hour is are black friday fights and the bad behavior an indicator that society is in decline well, according to uh, Michael, let's see here, Brandon uh, posts here. He says, these are outliers. I was very impressed with the logistical process and the staff at my local Walmart. Crowd was good, too. So odds are good that in most places, everything's fine with this. I mean, maybe a little bit of a... Uh, maybe a little bit of pushing, but we're not talking about any kind of uh, actual fist fight hair pulling or, or hair pulling like or struggles. So I, I think that what what happens out there is you've got thousands of stores that are opening up bright and early on Friday morning, some now on Thanksgiving as well. Mm -hmm. You've got thousands of stores, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of, uh, of Americans coming out to participate in this. And ultimately, all you get are a handful of YouTube videos of some bad behavior. I mean, on the whole, that's not a whole lot. Not that's a not a problem. Lot, no. mm -hmm. So um, here's actually a story from NBC News where they're saying that things are a little slower this year. A story from Martha White at NBCNews.com. Black Friday in the U.S. is like a regular weekend at the malls, only a little more so. Black Friday overseas 
is like Black Friday used to be in the U.S., including the shoving and fistfights. Call it America's latest export. As Americans hunkered down on their couches to score Black Friday bargains online, shoppers in other parts of the world took part in what had been a uniquely American experience, risking life and limb for dirt-cheap sweaters and discounted TVs. British police officers were called to stores across the country on Friday to quell surging crowds and fights over deals. And all the videos I've found so far that are the most egregious actually are from the UK this year. Uh, that's not to say there aren't some from the US. I just yeah. haven't seen them yet. The ones that are really coming up on searches for Black Friday fight on uh, like a video search on Google, they're coming out of the UK, UK. Which is interesting because the UK, I don't know, you know, I obviously don't live in Britain, but I know Boxing Day is a very big shopping day uh, in the UK and you know other places that have um, some sort of British influence. So it's interesting to see that there, that Black Friday is having an impact almost the same as Boxing Day. How long has uh, Black Friday been going on in the UK? If anybody is listening live over there, I know it's late, but feel free to call us up on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Retailers had adopted American-style Black Friday discounts to get a jump on the Christmas shopping season, according to Reuters. Even Brazil got in on the act with stores offering Black Friday deals uh, down there. In the U.S., stores opened early on Thanksgiving Day, some at the crack of dawn, long before the turkey was in the oven and the football games began. As Gray Thursday gave way to Black Friday, consumers were already on dawn patrols for doorbusters in hopes of scoring big deals on the holiday season's hottest items. From frozen dolls to smartphones to 4K TVs. Marshall Cohen, chief retail analyst at the NPD Group, said it's a little busier than I expected to see this morning, but others weren't impressed by the crowds. One 32-year-old housewife shopping for children's clothing at a Connecticut mall said, it just looks like any other weekend. The kinds of crowds we usually see uh, are missing, and this is one of the biggest malls here. I think people are just not spending a lot. Or maybe, as Danica suggested, they're just going out on Thanksgiving rather than on Friday and doing their spending then. And a lot of people are also opting for Cyber Monday or Cyber Weekend in a lot of places where they're offering the same discounts, if not less or more, online, online. as well. Because, you know, some people just may not live in close to a shopping area. Well, then there's no well, waiting either online. Sure. Yogi Berra also once observed of, of, a, of a restaurant that nobody went any there went there anymore because it was too crowded. Mm. And it may well be that people that a lot of people just said it's not worth it for me to go out and risk life and limb to save 20 bucks and I'm going right. to stay home and go shopping tomorrow. Florida mom Annie White, who hit Toys R Us and Walmart late Thanksgiving night to buy gifts for her three kids, said she initially planned to do her shopping online, but emails from the stores lured her out. She said, there were some great deals and they weren't even on my list. Uh, then I was like, oh, I can't pass that up, she said. While there was no crush of people at either of her stops, she said it was like a normal day, chalking up the lack of crowds to her fellow shoppers researching online before getting in the car as she had done. There were relatively few of the incidents of the past, the tramplings, the fighting over hot items that have been seen in past Black Fridays, a shift analysis attributed to a burning, a burgeoning amount of online shopping, especially on mobile devices. We'll give you some more info here in moments. What has changed uh, from this year to last Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can share your experience as well here on Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs... Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. 
and it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season, like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Special button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free and bring up anything that's on your mind. The live Black Friday edition of the program with you in studio. You've got Ian here. Rich Paul. And Danica. And join us on the phones or via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. You can join us on the toll-free lines as well at 855-450-FREE. We've been talking about all things Black Friday here tonight. Of course, that doesn't have to be where we spend uh, the entire show. You can always call in and take control of the airwaves here. But more analysis uh, from NBC News as to why it is that Black Friday this year just isn't as black as far as, you know, darkness of bad things happening. Uh, it seems like it was a little bit lighter this year uh, on Black Friday. And, uh, you know, not there don't seem to be any videos of tramplings uh, this year, and those weren't uncommon in previous years. Um, no actual, not as many, like, fights, at least not that I've seen. And I did some level of cursory research into this, trying to find the, the worst of the worst, the videos of people behaving poorly. Looks like most of the videos of people behaving poorly were coming out of the United Kingdom. Kingdom. Uh, certain, so they actually touch on that here in this NBC News story that apparently the whole Black Friday concept has been exported from the United States and has now been picked up in, in other countries where people are behaving poorly there. <laughs> uh, survey conducted on behalf of a technology company, Dynatrace, found that 37% of people who own a smartphone or tablet plan to buy more on these devices than they will in stores this year. As of noon Eastern on Friday, IBM reported that just over a quarter of online sales took place on mobile devices, a jump of almost 22% 
from last year. And of course, um, the last time I saw the numbers, I think it was 60% of Americans have a smartphone. So these things are becoming very ubiquitous in our lives. And I imagine that percentage is much higher when you look at different demographics. So if you look at people aged 18 to 35, they're probably, it's probably like 80% there. I'm sure, speculating, yeah. but I imagine that's, you know, you're going to find younger people more likely to have a smartphone than people in the elderly uh, set. Some retailers might have been more successful had they bargained or then they bargained for online. Sites including Best Buy, Cabela's, Foot Locker, and JCPenney all experienced performance issues, according to Dynatrace. In a statement, Best Buy spokeswoman blamed a con concentrated spike in mobile traffic. So their site was actually down earlier today. I don't know if it still is, but they were having some difficulty. The annual shopping migration was playing itself out in an atmosphere of economic uncertainty. While plumbing, plummeting gas prices have given Americans a few extra dollars in their wallets and a psychological boost, that stroke of luck is the exception rather than the rule. Stagnant wages for many, except for the affluent, and tepid sales earlier in the year have given rise to a wide range of pr uh, predictions about the most crucial season of the year for merchants. The most optimistic were calling for a rise of about 4.1% to $611 billion versus last year's holiday season. If that comes true, it would be the biggest increase since 2011. And with the rise of online shopping and Christmas creep, with some retailers offering holiday discounts for over a week now, Black Friday has become less of a sprint to the doorbuster deals and more of a marathon spread out over several days. And I had noticed this when I was going on different websites seeing that they were, they were calling this like Black Friday week now, and they would offer sales throughout the entire week rather than just on one day, which, you know, again, is going to diffuse the number of people who are going to show up at 9 a.m. or 6 a.m. or whatever time the doors open on Friday morning. So that could be a major factor. I mean, if it's if they're offering similar deals throughout the week, uh, you know, and people don't have that incentive to all be there at the same time, there's less of that crowd craziness uh, that can Absolutely. that can go on that can infect people. It can catch up on sleep because of all the turkey they've eaten. Last year's sales on Black Friday slumped 13 percent, according to Shopper Track. So they're certainly hoping for an increase uh, this year. Dozens of protesters. There's some other notable aspects of uh, fr Black Friday or the protests. They interrupted holiday shopping to speak out about a grand jury's decision on the Michael Brown case in uh, in Ferguson. Demonstrators took place at a Target and multiple Walmart stores, according to Janetta Elzey, who'd been tweeting and posting videos of the protests. They spent a few minutes at each store shouting inside as law enforcement stood watch. There was no immediate word of arrest. The protesters began Thanksgiving night and more happened on Friday. Gathering at the entrance of Macy's Herald Square in New York City and briefly stopping traffic. In fact, I saw a news story yesterday that apparently the uh, Michael Brown slash Darren Wilson protesters, the Ferguson protesters in other cities, in New York City, there's a story claiming they stopped the Macy's Day Parade. Uh, yes, that's. That did I happen. believe that's true. Wow, and Macy's Day Parade is huge. Yeah, so that's uh, there's still some. So there's there's stuff happening that are, that has nothing directly to do with Black Friday. Just besides the fact that this is a good time to reach large numbers of people. If you've got a message to get out to people in physical reality, um, being outside of a store probably isn't the worst place to do a protest today. Yeah. Now I wonder if concern about that might have also kept some people away from. Uh, from Black Friday. Sure, yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. According to Georgetown University's Institute for Consumer Research, 83% of shoppers will shop both online and in stores, while another 12% are planning to only shop online. Those who will visit also, or those who will also visit stores, say more than half of their shopping will take place online. Uh, their research director at the institute says the line between online and in store is getting blurred. A recent American Express consumer survey found similar behavior. Quote, we're seeing this year more than ever that a mobile device is central to a purchasing pattern. Uh, this according to uh, Senior Vice President of Consumer Products for American Express. He says, I don't know if this is the year we reach the tipping point or if we're beyond the tipping point, but it's clearly front and center this year. Retailers are more dependent on a smaller slice of the population to make their numbers uh, in fact, there's something that's been changing in the retail world, and that is that more stores are now matching prices for online. And I think Target was the first to do it. 
at least that I know of, the t- the first major retailer to do it, the major big box kind of retailer. Yes. Now Walmart is also offering Amazon price matching. So if you you know if you find a price on Amazon that it's a lower price on Amazon than it is at Target or Walmart, these old school big box retailers will go ahead and match those prices. Whereas before Amazon or before Walmart had a policy to not match online prices, they have changed that now, and I think that's a good sign. That yeah. shows that they're they're willing to compete. They're willing to do what it takes to keep customers coming into their stores because they do still have something that Amazon can't ever have, and that is that you know that uh, the experience of being able to come in and pick a product up and you know turn it around, look at the back of the box, and and know, having maybe, that interaction with another human being. Well, not that that really matters very much at a place like uh, Walmart. Half the time, the the human being you're talking to doesn't know a thing about the products that you're actually no, acquiring. No, but about. you're actually making eye contact and speaking with someone, and to some people that can be a, a good effect too. So I, I, I think agree some with people that. do like that in human interaction. The, there's no doubt that that's uh, that's the case. I mean, that's I, I, that's why some of the stores who tried to go to the uh, the automated checkouts only. They failed because <laughs> uh, because some people are upset by the automated checkouts. They want to have a person to look at, to talk to, to experience. Me, I don't really care that much. I don't yeah, mind going and using I. the automated thing. It doesn't really bother me. Um, sometimes the lines are shorter at the automated checkouts, but the few stores that had had tried to actually switch over fully to automated checkouts, that didn't go very well for them from, from what I understand because it lost the human touch. Yeah, some uh, I know some stores will have maybe two or four, depending on the size of the store, two or four like automated checkouts, and they're usually express checkouts that people can go and if they have you know three, four, five items, small items, they can just go through really quickly, uh, and that's generally what they're targeted for. Um, you know, if you have more complex uh, purchases right. such as like weighing vegetables or anything like that, you probably are want to go to a more fully. Um, human staff yeah i think you're right about that in my experience the automated checkout is a slower experience Mm -hmm. um you know the the machine itself doesn't scan as fast i've noticed that so when i or and this may be different with different stores but the grocery store that i go to uh when you scan an item it takes it a while to register and, and kind of reset the laser to scan the next item whereas the the uh, the non-automated checkouts, they can just scan and scan and scan, and they can go much faster. And half the time, they'll be able to punch in the code faster. They'll yep, be able to true. just you know read if you want debit or credit or something. And where's the machine? You're just like, okay, do you want cash? Do you want debit? Do you want debit with cash back? Tons and tons of different options. It seems like there has to be a technical reason for that, but I can't imagine what it is. I don't know either. It's just a, it's a different system that they're yeah. using. I mean, partially the user, user interface of the electronic checkouts is kind of clunky. It's right. It's got a lot of are you sure's and um. Yeah, there's no real reason for it that I can see. It's just that maybe they don't want it going too fast, so the the, the consumer can't confuse themselves. I guess maybe if it was going too fast, they'd wonder if they'd scan. Two things rather than one thing, or Mm. I don't know. Toll-free number here tonight, 855-450-FREE. That is a number that allows you to bring up anything that happens to be on your mind. You know, there's not that much more to say, I don't think, about Black Friday. I mean, the as I said, no trampling videos this year that I've seen, thank goodness. And the actual fights seem to mostly be in the UK. I'll post another link up. Actually, I've already posted the... The video of the women fighting over the underwear. That was the one I posted earlier tonight. (laughs) And then the Daily Mail article, which has some amazing pictures. That's all over on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. More coming up here on Free Talk Live. You've heard of Black Friday doorbuster deals. Well, don't miss Lumber Liquidator's Floor Buster deals. Get incredible discounts on your favorite floors at one-time only prices. There's never been a better time to get a great deal on pre-finished hardwoods, hand-scraped hardwoods, gorgeous bamboo, top-quality laminates, and get 26-month special financing. Plus, get even more Floor Buster discounts in our stores. The sale ends Tuesday. These deals will not wait until after the holidays. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. 
I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, November 28th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.11 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,187 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $365. Antiwar.com reports U.S. officials are confirming that they are engaging in ongoing negotiations with Arab nations in an effort to send Arab ground troops to Iraq and Syria to fight the Islamic State. With Iraq's military a corrupt train wreck and Syria's military not much better off after years of war, the U.S. coalition is keen to see some boots on the ground in nations to fight the Islamic State and are increasingly recognizing that neither nation's military is really up to retaking territory from the Islamic State. The U.S. has been increasing its own ground presence across Iraq, though they continue to deny that they're going to be involved in direct combat operations. Jordan seems to be be keen to get an Arab army involved and could be the first nation on board with operations. Selling the idea to either Iraq or Syria is going to be a tall order, however, as Arab troops really means in the context Sunni Arab troops from nations not on particularly good terms with the Shiite governments of those nations. Jordan and Syria have seen their relationships sour dramatically in recent years, with Jordan openly training U.S.-backed rebels for the fight in Syria and calling for the ouster of the Assad government. Sending this army careening into Syria and Iraq without at least some acceptance from those governments would be hugely problematic and would further complicate an already messy war. In the meantime, the U.S. continues to sell ideas like arming random Anbar province tribes or training up whole new Syrian rebel factions as the way to increase the number of boots on the ground. Their denials notwithstanding, it seems like the U.S. troops are also likely to get sucked into direct combat sooner or later. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports ride-sharing company Uber suspended its operations in the state of Nevada late on Wednesday in a setback that it said would cost nearly 1,000 jobs. Companies such as Uber allow passengers to summons cars using apps on their smartphones rather than calling a taxi company and have gained popularity in dozens of U.S. cities over the past few years. But they face opposition from taxi companies and some officials who argue the upstarts do not face the same stringent regulations as traditional cabs, and insurance companies want their drivers to carry more expensive insurance policies. Uber's decision to temporarily suspend its service in Nevada came after a legal setback. On Tuesday, a Washoe County District Court issued a preliminary injunction preventing the company from statewide operations. 
FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. UPI reports Walmart workers across the country will be striking on Black Friday, calling for better hours and a $15 per hour wage. The group Our Walmart, which is backed by the United Food and Commercial Workers, is representing the strikers who have so far presented formal strike notices in at least six states with more to follow. Marches and strikes are planned in over a dozen cities across the country, but they are not expected to disrupt the retailers' operations. In previous years, strikes have not been designed to interrupt shoppers or at-work Walmart employees, and there is no indication that this year could be any different in that regard. The company's estimate of striking workers has traditionally been much lower than the organizers. Walmart has released numbers saying dozens of workers have gone on strike, while the unions regularly claim hundreds. According to organizers, Friday's Washington, D.C. rally is preparing to host 300 protesters, 30 of whom are workers. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. <laughs> if you're a parent, chances are you know all about the spooky truth books. With subjects ranging from shadowy fraternal organizations to mind-controlling TV shows, kids can't get enough of this series of short, scary children's novels. And spooky truth author K.L. Graves is joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Now, my kids just love these books. In just four years, you put out 25 books. It came from Tower 7, Curse of the Chemtrails, The Zionist Who Cried Holocaust. Now, this stuff has really been catching on. Over 40 million copies sold. Old, so many bestsellers out there. I've been thrilled. Before this series, I was self-publishing pamphlets and handing them out on the train. Now I get emails from teachers and parents all the time telling me that my books are all their kids can talk about. Oh, well, it's true. My son used to hate to read. Now he's holed up in the basement with these spooky truth books all day and night. Says he never watches TV, doesn't even want tap water anymore. He just loves reading so much. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features waiting for you there. With you in studio, Ian here. Rich Paul. And Danica. And join us on Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. You can click over there, and uh, when you join us on Skype, you'll sound usually a lot better than you would if you called on the telephone. But, of course, those phone lines are also available at 855-450 free. It's not all Black Friday in the news, even though we are here live on this Black Friday edition of Free Talk Live. And still, would love to hear from you if you've got any stories. But it seems like the results in the United States today were pleasantly not outrageous, as they have been uh, in years past. No reports of trampling, at least that I've seen in the news. Uh, maybe a little bit of pushing here and there, but the out-and-out out fights, the the scraps over product, those seem to be happening in the United Kingdom. And again, we linked to those over on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. You can access all of those easily by going to news.freetalklive.com. Danica, you had a story tonight that's completely unrelated to Black Friday. Yeah. But it has to do with a banana. <laughs> And I'm not even sure if I can say it with a straight face. I'll I'll do my best. But the article is from Reason Magazine, Reason.com. Okay. Uh, the title is "Cops Arrest Man for Pointing Banana at Them. Say They Feared for Their Safety." Hmm. So the article starts off with saying cops almost universally make a claim that they were shooting because they were fearing for their safety. Yes, that's a that is what essentially will guarantee that they'll get off. Even as egregious as the uh, the shooting might be. All the cop has to say is, I was afraid for my safety. And yeah, then exactly. And the, and the article goes to say this claim has been made by cops um, as a go-to claim, even if it was made by a 300-pound probation officer in Georgia who shot a 12-pound Jack Russell Terrier because he insisted he gave the dog, quote-unquote, verbal commands before shooting. Mm. 
Um, but it goes on to say that officers in Colorado um, may have provided the clearest example of how the claim of officer safety is used to cover for police lack of thinking. Uh, the Daily Sentinel pr- uh, reports that a man arrested that a police arrested a man from Fruitville, Colorado, for allegedly pointing a banana at them as if it were a gun. Now, given the fact that this it was in Colorado, I'm wondering if perhaps the man pointing the banana may. Uh, you know, may have been on, you know, may have been smoking marijuana and may just have been a little bit goofy, perhaps, and playfully. Not pointing. that he actually thought it was a gun. But right, but playfully just, showing, just like, oh, yeah. look at me. Could be. Yeah. So the deputies. I wouldn't jo- that assumption. <laughs> oh, you know, and we don't have much more information um, why yeah. he was thinking that. Not yet, anyway. But the deputies, Joshua Bunch and Donald Love, said they fear for the Donald safety. Donald Love. I know. <laughs> They feared for their safety with a man, 27-year-old Nathan Rolf Channing, pointed a banana at them while crossing the 29 Bridge on foot, according to Channing's arrest affidavit. Both deputies said they saw the gun was yellow but feared for their lives. Nonetheless, the affidavit said. I, and this is a quote, I immediately ducked in my patrol car and accelerated continuing northbound, fearing that it was a weapon, Bunch wrote in the affidavit, which lists Love and him as the victims. Based on training and experience, I have seen handguns in many shapes and colors and perceived this to be a handgun. So Channing is now in jail. It's true. I mean, there are pink guns, right? Sure. There are Hello just, Kitty guns. The, the Hello Kitty guns. I posted a picture of the Hello Kitty gun. To- yeah. <laughs> so I, it's not it's not fair to, you know, to, to scoff at this and say, oh, well, it was yellow, so they wouldn't have thought it was a gun. I mean, it certainly could have been a gun, but to arrest the man for pointing a banana at them? Yeah. I mean, I guess we should be grateful they didn't shoot him. They he was but jailed for true. felony menacing. Do you, I mean what would that felony. mean? Felony. Felony menacing. Wow. So just like thinking it could like thinking it could be part of a felony. Like what does felony mean? No, 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 no. The, the charge is menacing and it's a felony. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. So like if you were to wield a weapon at someone, you know, that it's not illegal to open carry a firearm for instance in New or Hampshire. Uh what's that? Or or open carry a banana. That's true as well. At least not yet. Um, maybe after this, they'll pass a banana prohibition. <laughs> but uh, you know, got to keep the police safe. Don't want them thinking their uh, their life is in danger. But uh, you know, it's legal in in New Hampshire to open carry. Not necessarily in other states. Sure. I don't know what the laws are in other states. But it, you know, in New Hampshire, you can open carry. But if you grab the gun and then you know pull it out, start waving it around. At some point, you know, then you're going to rack up a menacing charge uh, or a brandishing charge. But uh, felony menacing, that seems mm-hmm. ultra serious. Yeah, that's ultra serious. Especially, I mean, they, they, they obviously knew that it was a banana, so well, why didn't they? at some point they... they figured that out. Right? Yeah. Larkin Rose did a great article called uh, Cops Are Cowards mm-hmm. that truly he points out, well, one thing is, you know, these, these cops that are, that are so terrified all day and night, the interesting thing is they have a lower death rate than construction laborers. Sure. Then, I mean, I looked Roofers. at this Forbes top 10 list of dangerous professions cops and are not cops on ain't one of them. Um, so, you know, I don't have a right as a construction laborer to kill somebody because I'm afraid, but yet mm-hmm. I'm more likely to die. Um, yeah, I can't imagine anybody would get charged with felony menacing for pointing a banana at another human being who's not dressed as a cop. No, no way. I mean, even if you were pointing the banana and going pew, 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 you probably wouldn't get a uh, felony. Sure. I mean, anything. how many kids have, you know, pointed, you know, curled up their fingers and say, bam, bam. Every male Every kid. child. Uh, Female not children, in school, too. They'll, yeah. excel you, they'll, they'll expel you for that today. Wait, are you are you saying that females also uh, do those sure. things? Sure. I mean, you're playing with what, um, like. You're not just what? doing tea, you know, tea time or whatever, having a little tea party. Oh, come on. Now you're just being sexist. <laughs> Calling oh, cops no, and no, robbers, it's not sexism Indians. anymore because these days boys and girls are limited to tea parties. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're not in the tea party, right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> All right. They so, probably use coffee to avoid any implicit endorsement of the uh, political tea party. So is there more to the story that, that you have to share? That That's pretty much, there's not really anything breaking just yet, whether mm. there's you know aftermath, whether the man has been released. Um, or a- anything like that is just the, the they have arrested him and wow. trying to tr- you know jailing him for felony menacing for wielding a banana. Oh so. yeah, I see what you're saying here. This is a fresh story. It was posted yesterday. Yes. Right. 
So, yeah, if, well, if you learn more about this before we do, please feel free to uh, give us a call here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Oh, and I didn't pick this up, the uh, story over at, what is this, Crime Insider, cbsnews.com. They point out that one of the cops' last name, I noticed Donald Love, as you said it, as the cop's last name, but the first cop's last name is Bunch. Yeah, Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> what a bunch of love. Bunch of bananas. Love your bunches. <laughs> Jesus. So uh, there you go. Yeah, but be careful. Those cops, man, they take everything way too seriously. I mean, you never know with these guys. There's some really great uh, cop pranks, by the way, on uh, YouTube. In fact, there was another one that Vitaly did the other day. Where they had a they got a mannequin out and uh, dressed it as though it was a it was a female mannequin and you know and had clothes put on it and so he would stand like around a corner from a building nearby a roadside and would grab the mannequin like by the shoulders and just shake it and, and <laughs> yell at it and like strike the strike the mannequin just to see what the cops would do and uh, you know most of the times the cops would come up and then they'd see that it was a mannequin and they were kind of cool about it. Obviously they were coming up to try to protect the lady and, you know, doing their jobs in that case. But a couple of times they just went ahead and arrested him anyway. Oh, because, you know, wow. Is this is Tally? No, 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 no. His name is Vitaly. Uh, Vitaly. Okay. I think not, it's, not the Tally. Yeah. Vit Vitaly Zodorievsky. I think he's Russian and uh, he's one of the more popular YouTube pranksters out there. He was one of the guys who did the bong prank. I don't know if you've seen the bong prank on the cops, but that's, that's oh, a pretty classic Oh, where they're smoking tobacco one. out of a bong? Yeah, he was the guy who was taking rips off the bong in that video, which is hilarious. Of course, that wouldn't work for us here because most of the time, <laughs> at least not on the square. <laughs> well, yeah, because the cops probably wouldn't mess with us. If they saw you walking down the street with a bong, they'd probably leave you alone. But I still think it would be funny to try to reproduce that, that prank because yeah. I think it's pretty good stuff. It would be funny to get a clean bong and just videotape and see what would happen if I yeah. walked down the street with a clean bong. Well, no, man. I mean, taking uh, rips of tobacco out of it. Yeah, could yeah. take down. That would be that would be a good next step. Toll free number tonight is eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. We got more to come here on the way. Your toll-free number allows you to take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. Coming up, Uber is in trouble in Nevada. They have put their operations on hold there. We'll find out what's going on. And you can, of course, take control here on Free Talk Live. Inventory isn't about products, kid. It's about money. Products sitting on shelves is money sitting on shelves. I hate overstock. I hate understock. I hate wasting time. I hate wasting money. That's why I love Granger. Granger Keepstock Solutions help us manage our facility's inventory so we have exactly what we need when we need it. No more, no less. It's inventory management my way. Get it? Got it? Good. Visit Granger.com slash Keepstock for more information. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. 
Don't Tread on Meme, M-E-M-E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value, and they look neat too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy to use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don't tread on meme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme, your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can bring up anything you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three. We're here live, by the way, on this Black Friday edition of Free Talk Live in the studio. It's Ian, Rich Paul, and Danica. Rich Paul, you can uh, you're getting pretty active with the whole New Hampshire jury scene. Rich Paul, uh, we've got a board of directors that has been put together as of late, and uh, you'll be putting together a, a pitch mm-hmm. as to how to take the organization to the next level. Now, you know, why would somebody who's outside of New Hampshire Find this useful. Find this uh, exciting. What's happening here? Well, the I mean, the most likely reason that someone outside New Hampshire would find this useful is because they intended to move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, or they just have an interest in seeing the Free State Project pan out as an illustration of uh, what our ideas can do. Or maybe you're just a big fan of jury nullification and you want to see those ideas be propagated effectively in one place. That's what we're doing here in New Hampshire with NHJury.com. Yeah, that's definitely true. We can become an example for the rest of the nation here, and it's going to be cheaper to do it in New Hampshire than it would be to do it in California. But once we've demonstrated the power of it in New Hampshire, I think that people in other places are going to say, hey, I want this to happen. Now, you can bookmark the website, nhjury.com, right now. Uh, I don't believe we have any donation info up there yet, but that's going to be coming because we're looking at sort of relaunching the organization in a a bigger way. I don't think we should say more than that at the moment because, honestly, we haven't figured it all out yet. Uh, But, Rich, that's what uh, you're working on sort of behind the scenes at the moment. Yep, and we're definitely going to be raising money and trying to go with some... uh, Uh, more mainstream advertising, trying to get our message out to more people uh, so that they can sit on it for a while before they're called for jury duty and really get comfortable with what it means and do some research on it. We'll talk about the latest on Uber. They are suspending operations in the state of Nevada. We'll explain what's going on there here in a moment. But first, uh, going to Skype where James is on the line in Arizona. James, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, Rich. Hi. Hey, who could forget the Cabbage Patch Kids riots uh, back when you were in junior high school? You uh, know what? You're absolutely right. And I uh, apparently I could forget that because I completely did until you mentioned point. it. But yeah, there, uh, there were several years, including the year they released Cabbage Patch dolls, that there was all kinds of mayhem 
uh, of people trying to get this particular product. Um, what and, uh, I mean, what, what what was happening back then, James? I mean, can you kind of recount what the scene was like? Were you were you experiencing this or just seeing the news reports? No, it's actually uh, if you've already forgotten because of some other reason, uh, Ian. Uh, a previous <laughs> caller talked about how such things didn't happen back in his day. Well, it was 1983 that I'm talking about, mm -hmm. and I remember it well because, well, I was a good boy who I didn't have any epiphanies while smoking bud with my friends that smoke bud all the time around me, but I didn't partake. So I was thinking about, Rich, uh, have you ever thought about if if you'd had an epiphany that wasn't um, uh, caused by something of a, of other substances, by um, substances, that is? Well, if, I've had a lot of... Have you ever thought about Rich? I've Rich, had a lot of epiphanies in my life, and... Uh, right. You know, I didn't uh, smoke weed from the time I was 18 to the time that I was 40. So it definitely, definitely a lot of those epiphanies have not been related to uh, smoking weed. Um, I also I do transcendental that's, meditation. That's great, because I was going to ask you about your possible passive if you didn't smoke weed ever. But I'm glad you didn't for 17 years. But I, I'm 22. thinking you probably, very good, the math. Uh, I'm thinking that a lot of people that uh, Ian praises, and, and including himself, that if he hadn't smoked so much drugs or done so many drugs in his 20s, that he'd be a better man now that he's in his 30s. But I, I also wanted to ask well, you I would about, argue that I would not be a better man had I not done the drugs well, I've done. My, yeah. You see, I oh, actually think I'm a better person because of the experiences that I've had uh, I, I used to be a computer programmer, and this was during the time that I wasn't getting high, and I was a very good engineer. Um, the, the problem is I was, I was grumpy. I didn't interact with people very much. I didn't like interacting with people. Um, I was taking Ritalin, um, which did help with my ADD, but it made me kind of antisocial. And when I came to New Hampshire... And when I stopped taking the prescription drugs and I started smoking weed instead, um, you know, I became definitely a more pleasant person to Okay, can I ask you a question about a pleasant person? I'm sorry? Go for it. Can I ask you a question about a pleasant person? Yes. That I normally am and always am, by the way, because I'm awesome, my religious instruction. I love you as God commanded me as myself, uh, Rich. But speaking of the non-aggression principle and you being a pleasant, respectful person, if you were down in the town square in, the, in New Hampshire, as I like to refer to since you uh, guys invaded a, a lovely little town of where of which I'm, I know that most people don't want you guys around. And I wonder why that is. Oh, have you I'm done a poll? Down, oh, actually, you, no, I, I, just, I think I'm, you're... I am, uh, no, I have not done a poll. Okay, again. then you Can don't I, know anything so, about uh, what most people want then, do you? I do. Yeah. No, you don't. You're speculating. Check out Stop King. I think oh, wow. There's an um, opposition group, so most people must hate us. I, I, yeah. All well, right. there's some important James. reasons for that. I mean, one of them is um, when we feel when when I'm approached by a friendly person who's coming up to say, hey, Robin Hood saved me last week and you guys rock and I... You know, I love what you're doing. I don't pull out a camera generally and videotape that <laughs> right. person. Mm -hmm. And and I've actually started changing that. I've started saying, hey, do you mind if I get that on tape? Sure. And eventually I'm gonna going to release a compilation video of some of the positive interactions that I have with people in, in Keen. But the thing is, it's the negative interactions that you have with people that you videotape and put on the web. So if you're just watching the web, I guess you can be forgi forgiven for thinking that that's all that happens. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even when the people in Stop Free Keen, which is the, what the group that he mentioned there at the very end of his call, mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, you know, even these people, they believe, as James does, that it's most people in Keen that, uh, if not everyone, in, I've, I've, I've had them claim that everyone hates you, uh, you being you activists, mm -hmm. you liberty activists. 
And obviously that's a false statement because we know there are people who like us, but we mm -hmm. don't know what the majority thinks. I would never say most people think one way or another. In fact, what's probably true is most people don't really have a strong opinion or may, most of them may not even be aware. Maybe in Keene, they're in more Keen, aware than they're otherwise. aware that we're here. Yeah, that much Everybody's is true. aware of us. Um, um, I don't some know if people everybody don't like is. us. Some people love us. Most people probably don't know like what we stand for yeah. or the details. And I would that's say most people are to... uninformed. Uh, on yes. this. too. And what was that? Maybe maybe indifferent. Well, yeah, and you can tell there's a lot of indifference because no, very few people bothered to vote. Uh, this year, there was a free state or free state project participant, James Cleveland, who was running for political office. And despite all of the people who were talking trash about the free staters, the voter turnout didn't go up. Not a single extra person bothered to come out. In fact, fewer people came out uh, to vote. More co uh, coming up on Free Talk Live. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t-shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. 
Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free here. It's the live Black Friday edition of the program. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online at freetalklive.com. If you've got Bitcoin and you need a car, then check out New Age Auto Sales. They have late model used cars that have been cared for in their rental fleet. And that means that because they owned these cars, they don't have to pay auction fees or transport costs. And so therefore you save. They don't have to pass those costs on. The cars are in great condition and they're priced to move. They can ship them anywhere in the world. So it doesn't matter where you are. You can go to newageautosales.com and check out their inventory. They're looking to become the Bitcoin auto dealer. But obviously, if you see something you like and you don't have enough Bitcoin, they can help you as well. Uh, so go to newageautosales.com for late model, well-maintained cars shipped anywhere in the world for Bitcoin. It's all available on their website at newageautosales.com. Our toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. More coming up on uh, the latest on Uber. Been sh sort of following their progress and the difficulties that they've been facing, just trying to do business, trying to innovate in the area of getting people rides from point A to point B. And uh, there's yet another uh, hurdle they're going to have to be jumping here uh, hopefully they'll be able to succeed at this in Nevada. We can talk more about that. But Rich Paul, we had a f another hostile call a moment ago from a man who claimed to uh, love you while at the same time being very, very nasty. And he was talking about this uh, this group, Stop Free Keen, which is this op opposition group that has formed here in the Keene area as a result of uh, some of the activism that we've done here in Keene that has been fairly, fairly you know, infamous, uh, for lack of a better term, well-known. The, the renown has spread. Keene activism, for better or for worse, has definitely made an impact in a lot of different ways, both inside and outside of uh, the Keene, New Hampshire area. And whenever you do things that are controversial, there's going to be people that are upset about it, and these are the people who are upset about it. They are not necessarily representative of what the average person thinks. I don't know what the average person thinks. I know that people are different, and people are going to think different things. And in fact, it's been my experience, and I'm interested to hear yours as, as another longtime uh, activist in this area, but it's been my experience that whenever somebody says the sort of classic objection line, which is, you know, Rich, I like a lot of what you stand for, but I don't like how you're going about doing it. Uh, you know, I don't like your tactics. Usually that's the statement. That's the, that's the critique that I hear the most is that I like a lot of what you stand for, but I don't like the tactics. And then if I get the chance, if I have time to talk to that person further, I will ask them to give me a specific example. What was it that they didn't like? What was it that happened that, you know, rubbed you the wrong way? And almost inevitably, the answer is unpredictable. It's different for everyone because each individual has a different set of values and things that they find offensive or not offensive. So some people have been upset by the 420 celebrations, which you were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. the, the smoking of cannabis publicly in Central Square. Others, they don't have a problem with that, but they didn't like topless Tuesdays or the young lady who walked downtown uh, topless while open carrying once upon a time. For mm -hmm. others, those are fine, and they didn't like the chalking, uh, or they didn't like, you know, fill in the blank, whatever it is. There's mm -hmm. something that uh, it's it's almost inevitable that the more activism you throw up against the wall, so to speak, somebody's going to find something they don't like in there. And that's mm -hmm. what I find is that there's no consistency in what it is that people don't like. There's one thing that stands out above and beyond anything else that I ever heard. And that is Robin Hooding, and specifically, I get more positive feedback about Robin Hooding, oh, you saved me from a ticket, than I do about anything else. But I also get a lot of negative feedback hmm. about the way that a lot of the people treated the meter maids. And that's something that legitimately upset a lot of a lot of people and it's it's something that I didn't do. I mean, when I Robin Hood, I go out and I say, "Hi, I'm Rich Paul. I'll be your merry man for today." 
And that's the end of my interaction with the meter maids. Mm. Every once in a while, I would try to race them to parking meters, but... You know, the the problem is it, it gets like a basketball game where you're trying to, you know, get in front of each other and beat each other to the to the thing. And that can lead to inadvertent physical contact, which is a bad thing. For sure. uh, so I just I, I just avoided the, the whole thing. And I think a lot of people, um, you know, kind of appreciated that. And. You know, watching watching the Colbert Report thing, I was not. Um, actually, the funny thing is, Cantwell was the worst, and he doesn't normally Robin Hood. He never Robin Hooded before, mm-hmm. and he never Robin Hooded again. Maybe he did a couple of days, but you know, I wasn't proud to be associated with it when I heard Cantwell saying, this is never going to stop, you know, (laughs) up in some woman's face. And, uh, you know, and if it bothers me, see, the problem. I don't think he got in anyone's face. Well, that's true. He wasn't. That was, and that particular clip was just audio. So you couldn't see exactly what the distance was either. But just the, the way he did it, I didn't like it. And the thing is, people I thought are it was not hilarious. going to. <laughs> the The other thing is, people are going to respond differently. It's kind of like uh, trespassing on government property. Mm-hmm. You know, if that property to belong to anybody else, you wouldn't go trespass on it. But because it's the government, and because the government is an illegitimate organization. We feel comfortable taking greater liberties with government property than we would ever take with private property. Now, the problem is that decision is predicated on our belief that the government is an illegitimate organization. And if somebody doesn't hold that belief, they can't follow that. Then he's going to say, hey, those people are trespassing. And he's not going to be convinced that the government is is illegitimate Same they're going to be convinced that we're assholes oh yeah that's right um you know what I'm you really sorry. shouldn't say that one on the on the <laughs> air i'm probably gonna i'm gonna dump that one just because uh I, I know that some radio stations there's not a real prohibition on saying that word but i know some stations get uh get upset about that one sorry about that um a-holes is entirely uh acceptable however but yeah, yeah. i think you're right about that that uh the people misunderstanding or not comprehending the political viewpoint that we're mm-hmm. advocating can make it difficult to have them empathize with where we're coming from. And it also makes it bad activism if the intent of our activism is to make them understand what we're saying, because what we're doing is not creating understanding. It's creating hostility, which is a bar to understanding. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a practice, and, and that's why I... I don't do it, um, and I would. Be, that, when you say you don't do it, you mean you don't confront the. I I don't person. yell at the meter maids. Mm-hmm. I just let them do their thing, and I do my thing, and I, uh, you know, maybe that's cowardly, but it seems to be a. Uh, it seems not to cheese as many people off. So to me, um, th- that's. And I can respect where you're coming from, but my concern with how you you've done things because of that is that you're just filling any meter, right? Like you're not fo- you're not in close proximity to the parking enforcer. You're just filling That's expired right. meters. So to me, I don't consider that saving anyone from getting a ticket. And when I'm out doing Robin Hooding, my mm-hmm. goal is to save people from getting tickets. I don't want to just put money in the meters because that's just mm-hmm. giving the state unnecessary revenue. If I'm nearby, if I'm walking 10 or 15 feet in front of the, the meter maid, then it's a guarantee that I've saved those people. Like she was going to write a ticket had I not put uh, a coin in that person's meter. If I'm just in mm-hmm. some random parking lot and drop a, a dime in a meter, there's no way to say for sure that that parking enforcer would have come to that parking lot within that time frame and actually had written a ticket. So I don't feel yeah, that's right true. about and leaving a card. The card says we saved you from, you know, your meter expired and we saved you from the King's Tariff or, you know, saved you from getting a parking ticket. I feel like that then makes that act of leaving that card dishonest. Do you leave those cards or do you just fill um, meters? I do leave the cards, and I hope people realize that I can't guarantee that they would have gotten 
uh, a ticket. What I know is that I caught them with their pants down and pulled them up before mm-hmm. somebody else caught them with their pants down and took a picture. That much is true. The toll-free number <laughs> is 855-453. That's the toll-free number here tonight, 855-450-3733. Moments remain on Free Talk Live. Coming up. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. We all have our own idea about what being safe and secure means. The doors locked, bills are paid, you've got a job that keeps the lights on, and a home to call your own. But what happens when Mother Nature throws a curveball? I'm telling you, this yeah, game's covered. Game cover. Are you prepared to live without electricity or passable roads for weeks at a time? Do you even have a plan B? If you do, are you willing to bet your life on it? Children left with no homes. And no one's coming to help them. Help them. The first step towards self-reliance in the face of disaster is a visit to MyPatriotSupply.com. There you'll find the absolute best prices on storable foods, non-GMO seeds, emergency water filtration devices, and so much more. All orders over $49 qualify for free shipping in the lower 48 states. Call 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. And speak to one of our preparedness advisors today. Or visit us at MyPatriotSupply.com. PatriotSupply.com. Remember, before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, the live Black Friday edition of the program. Toll-free numbers here, 
855-450 free that's 855-450-3733 we've got skype as well skype on in at username lrn.fm join the conversation bring up anything that happens to be on your mind with you in the studio it's ian here Rich Paul. And Danica. Antiwar.com. Great website. They've got the answers, the facts, and the readership, but they don't have a pot of gold. Uh, the War Machine, on the other hand, has plenty of money from the Federal Reserve's magical printing press. And the mainstream media, of course, covers whatever it is that they have to say. Antiwar.com only has you. Their staff is down to a skeleton crew with minimal pay, and they're committed to keeping the website online with the best of the worst of all the bad news. But they can't do it for free, and they can't do it without you. They need your donation at antiwar.com slash donate. And they proudly take Bitcoin, by the way. Antiwar.com slash donate because war is the health of the states so uh, we were talking about activism specifically the robin hooding here in Keene, new hampshire and my experience and I, I haven't been on the streets as as much as you rich doing mm-hmm. doing robin hooding you're one of the more active uh, participants in that uh, but whenever i've been out on the streets the reactions have been positive from and anybody that I get a reaction from has been positive. That's not to say that negative mm-hmm. reactions don't happen. Obviously, they do. We've had thugs attack the Robin Hooders out there on the streets. But those are mm-hmm. few and far between as far as those kind of real negative interactions. But uh, most people are very, very positive, and they have nice things to say. Mm-hmm. And presumably, those people have heard the allegations about the harassment and the you know, mm-hmm. the claims about intimidating and threatening, which, of course, are ridiculous claims. I mean, those, those well, things don't happen. Even the kid that came up on the uh, on the porch and donated to uh, to Robin Hood last week, who actually showed up for key invention, he mm-hmm. was at the bonfire party. That's right. Um, you know, even even he was like, you know, I'm really friendly to you guys. You've you've saved me a couple of times, but I don't like the way you talk to the meter maids. And it's and it's mm-hmm. that it's I don't usually get. Oh my God, you guys are horrible, horrible, horrible. You get. I love what you guys do, but. Why don't you leave those poor meter maids alone? You know, mm. it's, you know, leave Brittany alone. But and <laughs> and I I understand it. I mean, in a voluntary society, if if my wife or mother was out working as a as a meter maid and y'all came out and spoke to her like that, I would challenge you to a duel mm. um, because it's mean um, and. Regardless of what I she's think it's doing, mean to leave I don't want anybody to be mean to my wife. Yeah, I think it's mean to leave tickets on people's car, and I don't think there's anything wrong with saying to somebody, "Hey, stop that. That's not nice." Well, I and I agree with you, and it's not a bad thing to do once once in a while, but. You know, I. But the once in a while is on video, and then it gets brought up on uh, Colbert Report. The video clips that they played in that uh, yeah. footage that so many people have been angry about, as you pointed out, mm-hmm. was Chris Cantwell two years ago. Uh, uh, I mean, almost all of the footage. There was one piece of footage where it was me within the last three months, but mm-hmm. otherwise it was almost all like ancient footage at this point. Yeah, that's true, and a lot of. But I think that's a lot of what spurred uh, Stop Free Keen also in that, you know, Graham was out there Robin Hooding mm-hmm. and he, he was mouth. rubbing a lot of people the wrong way mm-hmm. on a whole variety of things. And it, it was he, for example, who called, uh, I think his name is Alan, uh, called him a baby killer and and uh, said he was racist because he didn't care if brown babies died. And that's well, just well. not the sort of thing it it doesn't win friends and influence people Mm -hmm. it pisses them off to the point where an iron door will come down between them and your message just as people will shoot the messenger for bringing a bad message people will shoot the message for being brought by a bad messenger sometimes. Mm-hmm. And you never, for that reason, you never want to be viewed as a bad messenger because people will shoot your message, the and thing that's is the you, payload. You can't help how people are going to view you, right? Like, you can try your best to well, sculpt your message, but ultimately some people are not going to like your message no matter how well sculpted it is. Some people are not going to like you're are not going to like your message at all and if they're actually hating on the message that's groovy even if they're hating on the delivery system if more people are getting the message 
than are rejecting the message due to not liking the delivery system, then that's probably a good thing. But I think that in this case, a lot of people have been um have have been offended on this. Let me ask and, you this one, Rich. Uh, you were uh, with me at the uh, the situation where the DEA was in town earlier this year. Mm-hmm. Listeners, uh, longtime listeners, may be aware of this. If not, you can go and search for DEA Keen on YouTube, and you'll find a 17 minute video that I made that takes four mm-hmm. hours of a raid on a local head shop and compresses it down to you know 17 minutes. Mm-hmm. And in that video, you and I both verbally give the DEA a hard time. Uh, oh yeah. You know, arguably, you were definitely giving them the same hard time that you will not give to the parking enforcers. Absolutely. So if the DEA sent in a bunch of grandmotherly looking women to conduct that raid, would you have changed how you approached that situation? Yes, I would have. Why? Because the, again, we're talking about the number of people who perceive things. And one of the things about, I, I look at, at activism as performance art. Mm-hmm. And one of the most important things about art is choosing what symbols you're going to use and how to portray them. Here's an example. The grandmotherly old parking, uh, not parking, but crossing guard yeah. oh, who yes. just went after uh, Derek like one of those little yip-yip dogs upon seeing him. But because she was an old lady, people were more sympathetic to her they sure than were. they were to Derek. And it's, we it's can so say bad. that's not right, but it doesn't matter if it's right. What matters is the outcome is we lost more points than from that than we would have if it had been a big burly guy they give more credit to her it's so ridiculous how people perceive that they don't even perceive the reality of what's happening during that video the video where the crossing guard smacks Derek J with a stop sign yeah. people do not comprehend even I had a conversation with Robert Murphy who's a sort of well-known libertarian you know thinker guy and mm-hmm. I showed him this video uh, in a Facebook conversation and he was just like anybody else who's seen the video he thought that uh, you know we were harassing this old lady as she was just trying to get kids to cross the street that didn't happen mm-hmm. if you watch the video there's no kids around whatsoever Derek J says hello in a very pleasant tone of voice and this woman turns around screams no at him and then approach you know closes six feet of a gap between him and her and then strikes him with the with the stop sign completely unprovoked yeah and no one can see that happen it's like because it's an elderly lady their perception of reality is completely muddled right we can tell her to check her old lady privilege yeah we automatically reality is that she has that privilege she in the public mind. It's crazy. Yeah, we, we, you know, they definitely feel more sympathy towards her. My question is, is that she obviously recognized, I, you know, I've seen the video, obviously. She obviously recognized or has heard of Derek because she you know, looked at him and said no. So um, maybe you can provide a little bit of context to events prior to the video. Was she aware of what Derek was doing before the events or how did she know that it was... I don't know if she'd seen Derek out there previously. She had definitely seen Kelly and myself out there okay. doing some outreach previously, and I had known that she was a grumpy woman, uh, but gotcha. you know, I didn't expect to see that happen. We've got Dave. He's on the line calling from New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Dave. Yeah, this is kind of related, but I wanted to sort of rebut uh, an assertion that Michael Dean made when he called in a few days ago about uh, talking about the Free Keen parking, you know, the Robin Hooder business, he seems to have this idea that all publicity is not good publicity. And, uh, you know, technically that might be true, but basically almost all publicity is good publicity. And his idea is that you you run away from the media whenever you see them and you don't talk to them and, and that kind of thing. And this is the... This is a Rush Limbaugh approach. That's the kind of way Rush Limbaugh treats the mainstream press, and I don't think it's appropriate. And and my experience in New Hampshire has been, I mean, having been in the you know a feature in the mainstream press maybe I don't know ten or twenty times since I moved to New Hampshire, I, I almost never would say that I have any 
regrets about having spoken to the mainstream press. I am you totally with you. I totally mm -hmm. agree. But, you know, what do you expect? I love Michael Dean, but, you know, he lives in a bunker in Wyoming. <laughs> so he's not exactly the kind of person who is an out front kind of news media character in the first place so he doesn't have the same level of uh, of experience with that it would be interesting to have you contact him directly dave and maybe have him you know maybe have you on his show to have that conversation directly i'd be interested in hearing that but we are out of time for tonight that's dave from ridleyreport.com uh, it's been ian rich and danica and we'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com you've when commercials come on, don't push the button. Instead, listen. Even if you don't sell things for a living, you're still selling in the various conversations and transactions that make up your busy day. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important, especially if you're a job seeker. So take a lesson from Madison Avenue. Often the fewer words, the more effective the message. Like Jiffy Lube, where you never need an appointment or the office max ad that says you supply the ambition we supply everything else how about online ticket broker stubhub.com the way in when it's sold out or cybercupidmatch.com's seductive go ahead it's okay to look how cleverly and succinctly can you distill your message for more tips hit survivalspeech.com i'm holland cook Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The Corey Moore Show is coming up next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, November 28th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,190, silver around $16.23, and Bitcoin's trading around $364.20. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat is presented by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. They've created a menu of food that's so good, so easy to make, you'll find yourself eating it every day, even though it has a shelf life of up to 25 years. eFoods Direct is offering 10% off to all Liberty Beat listeners. Just go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat for your savings today. In the news, a Harris County, Texas deputy constable in Houston has been charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon after firing his gun at a woman while driving through southwest Houston. Kenneth Kaplan was a deputy with Precinct 6. On November 11th, he allegedly pulled up next to a car, rolled his window down, and shot at the woman inside, with investigators saying the bullets grazed the woman's head. Kaplan was off duty at the time of the incident. He was arrested and taken into custody on Wednesday. Plans by the Department of Homeland Security and the Central Intelligence Agency to delete thousands of insignificant records have information activists up in arms. The National Archives and Records Administration had proposed deleting government records that lack administrative, legal, research, or other value. That would include records from the Department of Defense and Department of Justice, the CIA, and DHS. Some of the DHS records include files on the Einstein 3 network monitoring system, which contains a wealth of information, including metadata such as email and IP addresses. 
On Wednesday, seven United Nations human rights experts called on President Obama not to yield to pressure from the CIA to redact portions of the Senate Intelligence Committee report on CIA torture. The experts released an open letter to Obama stating that his decision will have far-reaching consequences for victims of human rights violations everywhere and for the credibility of the United States. The Liberty Beat, sponsored by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Consideration for the Liberty Beat comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, November 28, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. Trappers in Saskatchewan, Canada recently established a roadblock to keep oil companies from operating on their land. The Dean people of Dakarmi are Aboriginal First Nations in northern Canada and have a long history of trapping for a living. They say that way of life is now being interrupted by security gates and operations for mineral and oil exploration. Bobby Montgrand said the province's let it burn forest fire policy has also decimated wildlife and destroyed cabins, making it increasingly difficult to make a living in a culturally sustainable way. The police chief of the Houston, Texas Police Department has said he plans to put body cameras on all uniformed officers within one year. The cameras have already been worn by 100 HPD officers as part of a pilot program. Mayor Anise Parker has stated she supports the plan, but finding the funds will be an issue. Chief Charles McClellan says he believes they can put cameras on all 5,400 officers for around $7 million. The Liberty Beat is made possible by the support of Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? Well, the Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more details, just visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, November 28, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Amid the catastrophic economic crisis spurred by Tuesday's release of This Christmas, the new holiday-themed album by John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John, economic experts told reporters today the Christmas CD has quickly plunged the nation into a double-dip recession. When investors learned that one-time screen couple John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John had reunited after 35 years for an album of timeless Christmas classics, investors had no choice but to pull money from markets immediately. We were already on shaky ground with the collapse of the U.S. subprime mortgage market and the reversal financial crisis in Europe, but consumer confidence plummeted after Americans saw the new album with a picture of Travolta and Olivia Newton-John holding cups of hot cocoa. We believe that when other countries find out the album features a Christmas song that pays tribute to summer nights, we could be looking at a global contagion. This is the blackest day on Wall Street in two decades. This is the Onion News Network. You're born alone and you die alone and this world just drops a bunch of rules on top of you to make you forget those facts, but I never forget. I'm living like there's no tomorrow because there isn't one.